A very good afternoon. The sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. There's a feeling of euphoria in the air here as well. I'm, I'm sure you'll agree, Glenn. After last night, it was a fantastic Group B, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an excellent Group B. Uh, one of the best, actually. Lots of 180s, big score, and we fancied that we built it up. They delivered. Quick reflection on that by looking at the table, and it was Robert Thornton who, well, he's got one foot in finals, like, let's be honest. Yeah, we were waiting for him to turn up. I mean, it's, once again, it's not his brilliant best. He's just doing what he needs to. It'll be very interesting if he's just peaking at the right time this time. And just two points separating the rest of them. That means that it's anybody who's the other two spots. Yeah, Jeremy Fagg looked a little bit disappointed. I told him to get his chin up. He lost a couple of four threes. I could have gone either way there. I think four points after day one's a good start. Right, that's coming up this evening, 10 p.m. live here on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel and Sporty Stuff TV. But this afternoon is all about the conclu conclusion of Group C. Here's what happened yesterday. Ben Verdonk was fighting through the pain barrier. The Belgian managed some good moments, but ultimately his arm injury became too severe and he had to withdraw from the tournament. Scott Walters played well, but with little reward. The Hampshire man picking up two victories to ensure the damage to his chances is not beyond repair. Could he sneak in to the top two? John Desremo lost seven of his first ten matches this week, but has now won seven of his last ten. With three wins yesterday, he's certainly in the running. As is Mark Barilli, who continues to produce flashes of class, like this fabulous finish, but maybe consistency will be the key for the Scotsman. Australia's Mal Cumming currently occupies second spot, failed to make finals night last week, is its second time lucky before he heads back down under but it's Dom Taylor at the top of the tower. He won four of five fixtures to set the pace on Thursday with some fabulous finishing like this. Yeah, it was a great day for Dom Taylor, but I don't think anybody, uh, get your opinion on this, really dominated the group. Yeah, exactly that. I think uh, still all to play for now. A very interesting first game. Dom Taylor can put some space above the rest of them. Mark Borelli can make this group very compact again. I still think today there's someone need to bring their A-plus game to get through. Yeah, we'll have a look at the table as it finished yesterday. So Dom Taylor, as we said, top of it on eight points. Now, Sven Verdonk has now withdrawn, as we saw he did withdraw during his last match he'd lost all of his games he won't be in we are going to replace him though today so Andy Jenkins will move into this group um, look he could actually qualify just to clarify that it's possible mathematically if he wins all of his matches and things go his way but it just changes the dynamic of the group doesn't it having someone like Andy Jenks who let's face it can be a little bit little bit of a wind-up merchant yeah I mean just first of all to Sven Verdonk he come here to play himself into a bit of practice as well so the very best wishes to him it was tough to watch him at the end Andy Jenkins what a story the Motor Super Series bring is today going to be another one of them I think he'd be fancying Dom Taylor to demolish the rest of the players and then for him then to kick in there but you feel that Andy Jenkins to have that story would be, have to win five out of five yeah it's a bit like a late entrant to the, the big brother house it'll be an interesting complexion on this group as for yesterday let's take a look at the numbers the statistics um, again around the 88 average which we've been seeing consistently at the Super Series recently so you know par for the course very interesting 109.31 from Mark Borelli the first game of the day Mark Borelli has a real chance again against the very impressive Dom Taylor first is there an indication that he plays his best at the beginning and we didn't quite get as many maximums in the afternoon session as we did in the evening session yesterday but Often on Fridays, games get a little bit more tense, don't they? Absolutely. 88.09, that is very, very solid across the board. That bottom average there for the overall. It's very compact, it's very tight, very competitive. It's game on. Right, how do the bookies see it? Let's find out. Here are the odds for... This is a topping the table. Dom Taylor, obviously, now a short favourite. But Scott Walters, he was odds on before it started. He's drifted now to 5-1. to one. Winning his last match has kept him in the hunt, really, yesterday. Andy Jenkins coming in, 300-1. to one. Is it worth a pound? 
it's like I said, if the Motor Super Series does have some fantastic stories, and that one be right at the top. I think Dom Taylor's great value at five to four. If I was going to go for value, if Mark Borelli wins this game, these type of flair players like Mark Borelli is seven to one looks quite inviting there. Well, let's see what the man alongside me has come up with for some tips for you today. Talk us through this, Glenn. Yeah, like I said, we want to see the uh, story today. So Andy Jenkins to get a 180 against Mark Borelli, no problem there, and a couple of handicap bettings. I think Dom Taylor can beat John Desmarais quite comfortably. And I just think there's something about Mark Borelli today, and I fancy him to get at least three legs against Scott Walters. Pays just under 6 to 1, but do gamble responsibly. 18 plus begambleaware.org for more information on safer gambling. Right, let's get the Friday action underway. We're going to have two sessions. We're going to fill the places at finals night. And the first match is Dom Taylor against Mark Borelli. It will be commentated on by this man and Henry Deacon. Afternoon, Henry. Well, thank you very much, Chris, and a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to day five here at the Moda Super Series, the final day where you find out the final five who are going to qualify for tomorrow night's finals here in Portsmouth. Well, Don Taylor is leading that particular race as things stand. Eight points, four wins from his opening day. He came into this tournament with a lot of clamour. And he was living up to the bidding at times. Four ton plus finishes en route to those four victories yesterday. And he takes on Mark Barilli, a player who improved his level of performances from Group A into the opening day's displays in Group C. But what is he going to provide here on Friday at the live lounge in Portsmouth? He kicked off yesterday's session in some roof racing style. He averaged 109.31 in a 4-0 success against Scott Walters. Why, well, as for Dom Taylor, he was slow out of the blocks. He averaged 79.83, but that was good enough First to Dom get the better first. of Game Sven on. Verdonk with two ton-plus finishes en route. Justin Bradshaw is your referee for the afternoon session and sat alongside me in the commentary box. It's the former Premier League champion. 114. Yeah, very intriguing first game, this one. I think Dom Taylor can really put one foot into Saturday night with a victory here. But Mark, Mark Borelli, this is his 59. biggest game of the week. Quite simply, it's his biggest game um, because he can really compact this group. But he, he is up against someone who really did a job on him late last night. A nice 100 average just to let him know who's the boss. But today is a new day. 100. It's a new day with a new field because of Sven Verdonk's withdrawal, as we were hearing at the top of the programme. Andy Jenkins has come in as a replacement for him. Thank you to Andy for stepping in. It's much appreciated. He's very chipper as well. I've just had a chat with 55. him. 55. I think they all found it. All the players there found it quite amusing. He was on 300 to 1 there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Motor Super Series is... Full of incredible stories. 140. From, from Corn and Whitehead all the way down to Raymond Smith and type of stories, the, the you know, the grey mushers, but I think that would be the biggest of them all for Jenks to come in late. And do 174. A job. Fantastic board management there. Well, if he's going to go through, it's going to be mainly because he needs Don Taylor to do some jobs and he's come out of the traps really well, leaving 32 after 12. 60. Dom, you require 32. 32. So, double four now. Now, he may think about this, but he's not on a finish. If he comes inside here, 24. things could have been very tricky indeed, but he goes on the outside wire and will return for that double four. Very sensibly assessing the situation there, which I liked. I mean, double four is not one to, to try and bust. 48. But if you get into the realms of double oh, two, double eight. one. So you'll want to put this one to bed. Scoring phase, that 174 was really nice. Now there's a bit of panic sets in. Game shot in the first leg. Panic, Don't what panic? Know. It just seems to be beating the player at the moment. Like I said, that one big average came against Borelli yesterday. But a very Second impressive leg individual. Marked, first game on. Forty-two, And in some weird way, Andy Jenkins will probably relish this. And actually, this might be Andy Jenkins at his most dangerous because at the best of times, he likes to 
have a little bit of a a wind up in the practice 100. room. He likes to tell his opponents exactly what he thinks. Well, he's got this free roll today, and I think he is going to embrace every single bit of 100. it. One hundred. Yeah, you kind of but think, you know, does he want Dom to win? It? Does he want Dom to run away with it, beat everybody? So if and he does get to ten points by winning his five games. This guy does seem to be just coming good right now. 180. He, he didn't hit a lot of 180s yesterday, Dom. His finishing was outstanding. In one match alone, he checked out on 144 and 141. 121. He just feels it's a bit of a must win for Borelli for a few reasons. He's, he's someone because it, Borelli's next game is going to be a really big one against John Desmaro as well. So if he can just come out the traps, well, it's looking a tough ask against 100. the tower. Eighty-four. Yeah, he's just flicking them darts, Henry. I know that he's feeling very comfortable at the moment, Mark. Where is this guy? Just looks like he's in his element. So treble twenty. A double eighteen. Eighty-five. Looking good, Mark isn't he? Mark, you require one hundred and fifty-four. Looking in the mood, and this one five four for Barilli may have to go along for treble eighteen. Or oh, no, 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 no. Decided to stay there. Ninety-four. Dom, you require 36. Please, perfect marker for him. What a fancy Dom from here. Game shot in the second leg. Clinical. Dom Taylor. A lovely start. A perfect start for Dom Taylor. I think he can smell Saturday night already. Third leg is Dom to throw first. Game on. Ninety-two. How severe a threat would Dom Taylor be if he was to progress his way through to Saturday night? I think he's the polar opposite One to the winner hundred. last week, Dan Lowby. Uh, I, I, I would sort of say Dan Lowby's more of a Mark Barelli. As we look at his lovely throw, just look how big, long arms. He's virtually putting the dart in treble 20, but just as much as I talk about the end, look at them fingers touching the carpet at the end. It's almost perfect, that throw. I really like it. Whereas Mark's got the little flick, them fingers at the end, the nowhere near pointing to the carpet. Well, 120. So a little bit like a Barney throw, is, uh, Borelli's the way he's letting go of the dart. But look at that. Look at that elbow there. Is it going above the white sign on point of release? And then that beautiful follow through, that long arm he's doing. It looks very relaxed as well. Looks like his, his heart rate and everything's just at the. Optimum for him. There's no panic. Whereas in the previous leg, he felt Mark was just a little bit feeling it. I think Mark Tell likes to grow into matches. Can he find the fishy in the darty dishy, but not on this particular occasion? 95. Mark, you require 136. A little bit of bully. Mark's getting chances, but the 154 and 136. 52. And not a lot of pressure on his Dom, 75. Is, 75. Dom looks at treble 17. Two darts, a double 12. Resets, center of the board. Game shot Smack, in the third leg. Bang in the middle. Dom Taylor. And there's a little fist pump just to tell you exactly how he's feeling. He knows the situation. He knows a four-point gap at this mark to throw first. part of the day is really, really important because then he can settle into his next matches because he's got a big one coming up against the unpredictable Scott Walters who can do absolutely anything on this dart board. Well, it's not just that. It's the way that he's doing it. 45 darts for the first three legs. He's not just beating Mark Barilli. He's laying down the gauntlet for everybody 100. else. That this is the level I'm going to play at. I'm not going to wane from the level that I'm playing at. Effectively, what he's trying to say 95. is I'm going to be the top dog. You've got to play for second. He's just laying the marker down, isn't he? There's, there's a nice feeling to see that four-point gap and the fact he's going on to 10 points. So there's, there's a couple of real indicators there which will... 100. Probably something he highlighted very early as he's coming in. I'm on first. I've done a job on Mark yesterday. And he's round about that same average as what he had. It was a beautiful 100.91. 100. 
against Borelli yesterday, and he's bang on the button again here. Well, this is the exact Monaco consistency, 100.2 average, and then kicking off ton-ton, although he's not going to do that again in this particular 85. visit. Yeah, that throw, to me, smacks consistency as well. I haven't seen him throw a different dart. 131. You know, replication is key. There's not a lot wrong with that. I mean, just look how smooth it is for me. It's just about getting that snap right, just that point of release. 92. Well, Borelli Martin after 12 wants tops. He's not playing bad himself, just shy of 94. He's being forced to take opportunities Jane, like this, and he does exactly Mark that. Barilli. 15 dart leg for Mark Barilli there. And if you actually have a look at the legs one in this game, 15 there for Barilli, 15 for Taylor, followed by a 13 and a 17 to kick off. It's been a really good standard in this opening match of the day. Yeah, very enjoyable, very competitive. Excellent quality. 134. We were, we were spoiled for a cracking dart in Group B, which didn't surprise us. So many 180s. It was an amazing night. 80. How good was Robert Thornton? Just similar to Dom, just did what he needed to do. I, I know he's talked about he's got this bogey about being there on a Saturday night. Well, maybe he's qualifying just a little bit differently because he wasn't at his blistering best in the round 86. robin phase of Group A and, and Group B, even though he won 4 to 4 last night. But I'm just wondering if he's going to peak on Saturday night. Who is going to be at the peak of their powers in Pompey tomorrow evening? You can find out by scanning that QR code on your screen. Tickets available for every single Saturday night, including Champions Week, which is on Saturday the 5th of August this time round. So pick your week, whichever one you want to come to. It's a couple of quid entry. And it's a very good night. At the darts, it's an intimate and unique Dom darting Yuquan, experience. It's one to tick off the bucket list. Is Taylor going to tick off this game for a 147? Well, he rounded off a game yesterday for a 141 checkout. Is he going to round off with a 147 in frame shot. to and win the game Tom for Tom Taylor, who gets the better of Mark Perilli by four legs to one? It puts him onto 10 points. They laugh and they share an exchange at the end, but it is Taylor who's victorious. And have a look at that for an average. 103 and a half to kick off his day. He gets the better with Barilli by four legs to one. And after the break, it's coming up against Walters.
big start for Dom Taylor then before the break and a big match coming up now featuring Cumming Malcoming who is looking to open up a bit of a gap between himself and Scott Walters. He was the odds on favourite before a dart was thrown but two wins yesterday in much need of a good start today. If Cumming wins this he will be four points ahead of Walters and the Australian will be in a very strong position with Walters needing work to do. Big match for the pair of them. Big team in the commentary box, Henry Deacon and Glenn Durant. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. The guy in your picture, Scott Walters. It didn't go to plan yesterday, but I think that win by Dom Taylor, probably effectively the players are thinking Dom's already through, and it's a fight for second place, making this game doubly big now. Both in that area where they can qualify, six points for coming, and four for Walters. You want to get in the mix on six points because Scott's the type of player where... He can go five out of five, no problem at all today. He was a big favourite going into to throw first. Group C. Game on. I think it's time to deliver and for the Australian. This is a big, big chance to cement second place. And as far as he's concerned, he's been here for a couple 82. of weeks now. And this is his final assault. It's his final go, his final charge. And when you travelled all the way over from Australia over to play in this competition, well, you want to give your absolute damnedest. Now, the first thing we can... Assess from the get-go as far as Scott Walters is concerned today is it is episode one of Flight Watch concerning him because 100. he has gone with the fluorescent stem and flight combination. The fluorescent seafood combination. Now, we have seen him yesterday deviate 99. between that particular setup and a white stem and flight One hundred. What do the fluorescent flights do? The kind of seafood type flights. Does it actually help when there's like maybe like a dart that could obscure? I'm 22. thinking it's going to help with a dark environment, as you can see there. But you know, if that's a really shiny board, like I said, I, I sometimes often go back 99. to ninety-nine. Uh, the BDO in, in Celsi, where it was the brightest board I ever played on. So if you had a fluorescent or a a see-through one. There never there hasn't been for me that setup. One hundred and quite traditional, so maybe just Mal, you require all to do with the lighting. I don't think it's necessarily how the darts are flying because they look the same setup. Sixty. What colour Scott, would you, you say, Malza? Hundred and forty. Hmm. Mustard-like. Is this going to be a mustard finish? One hundred. Mustard setup. Mal, you require. Is this going to be a mustard finish? These are the types of yeah, finishes you want to leg. take and Mal need to coming. take. And like I said, with the headline, like this sort of in this group with Scott Walters. And you'll see that with Scott. Second leg, it's Scott to He's showing first. all his emotions no. and all he's telling you there, here we go again. I wouldn't give too much away because Mal is very solid. Just look at Mal stood behind there. He's in a total focus there. He's just already planning his attack. 85. Whereas Scott, he'll even show your hands in a game of poker. 60. I wonder if he's enjoyed his experience over here in England. He'll be back with in Australia with Jeremy on Monday, he tells me. And even when he wasn't playing this week on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, he was around the building. Me and Mal actually building up a little bit of a coffee club because we were actually bumping into each other at a popular chain of coffee shop nearby the venue here in Portsmouth. Fifty-nine. Yeah, that's not a good sign for Scott. He's a massive, massive one eighty hit there, Scott. And they're just a little bit away from the target for his liking. Eighty-five. Well, he's one of them players who can just turn so quickly. I'm a big fan of this man. Eighty-five. Thirty. There is that possibility we could have two Australians in the final tomorrow night because Jeremy Fagg is in Group B contention, very much in Group B contention following last night's affairs there. Fifty-seven. Yeah, he didn't look too delighted as he was walking away, but he sat in second place on four points and 
I think you should have been seeing the positive. You should go 99. downstairs, which you did. Scott, you require 156. Potentially leaving a bug if he'd have stayed on the 20s there. For Scott Walters, two treble 20s. So now it's just plan B, which is the setup play. Need to treble. 60. Mal, you require 167. And that trebleless visit means Mal Cullen is back in this leg. Another treble 20. 99. Scott, you require 96. So 96 for Walters to level up at one apiece. Double 18. You've already seen this combo from Walters this week. But are we going to see on the double nine this time? No can do, sir. And so coming with turns to 68. 68. Yeah, he felt he did everything right there. He just sort of reset himself, composed himself. This is looking like the bullseye is going to come into effect. 43. You'd be disappointed he didn't get a dart Spot or a double from 68. Nine. That opening dart was not in the plan. It's two darts, a double four for Walters after 22 darts. Surprising. Seven. This is not the Scott Walter version. Now you require 25. We wanted to see. Walters has waned when it's came to the doubles. 17. But coming, can it punish? And Scott so Walters will return up to the madhouse to level up at one apiece. One up, two up, and what can he see? Game Enough to find the double. What a piece. Yeah, it's one of them legs of darts where you, you don't want to remember. But first. Game on. It was vital he got that winning double there because two nil down in the best of seven. It's tough to come back from there. Mal will be hurting right now. Every dart he's 16. thrown for the next six or nine. He'll be going back to them opportunities missed to go 2 0 up. Something in the eye of Scott. Seen Sven Vedonk as I went to the balcony there. He looks a pretty de dejected guy. Wish him all the best and hopefully he gets well soon and gets their arm sorted out. And look, it's not an easy decision to make. No one wants to do that. But ultimately, he's got to look after himself. He's got to look after number one. And and by doing that, he has 100% made the right decision. If you're not in a fit condition to play, you, you shouldn't put your body through it for the sake of putting your body through it. Because the long-term damage it could cause you could be worse than the short-term pain. Yeah, good shout. It was them words he said. He felt 85. like crying on the stage. That's what resonated with me most. Scott Walters just beginning to take control now. That's the last thing he wanted. Just snatching the darts away from coming. 66. Really being irritated with something in his eye there. For coming, you need a, a couple of choices exactly what the doctor ordered. 140. You're not going to have to have an on site doctor at this rate. Send the donk. With the arm, Walters with the eye. 100. And a bit of man flow in the comms box. There's the Perspex glass when you need it. That was the perfect first dart as well. That's unlucky. 60. That's second Scott, best. So these are two dart combination. And these are types of finishes that Scott Walters is going to need to take today. It's going to be one dart at tops. 32. That's the difference. That is the now difference between winning and losing games. That sort of area of the game. I've no doubt he can match players for the scoring power. Game shot in the Give third. A chance. Mal coming. The big Aussie takes it with both hands. Let's go with throw. Scott to throw first. Game on. That irritation in his eye. Just naff. Can irritate you more than anything when you're up there. You start blaming that for every dart that you're throwing. He's having his own battles up there with himself. Well, you're seeing it between pretty much every throw now. 135. 
100. Sixty. Solid, but not spectacular right now, this match. Both players will be... 55. Disappointed at the end of it if they lose this game. All of a sudden, now it's just about the two points. 96. One hundred and thirty-four. To a treble visit. And look what he's left again. Seventy-two. Whereas these finishes you like to call Scott, you this and 72. that. These combinations, which can be the making of you or the unraveling. That's a single one. So seventy-one left. He's going to go treble thirteen here. Thirty-two. And he's himself now on tops in the end, and now. 10. Hopes that Mal Cumming cannot take out the 110. This would be for a break of foe. Will he move across to the treble 18? Indeed he did. 42. We had a few 110 Scott finishes Rupert last 40. night. And you felt that was a free hit the way Scott Game shot on the fourth leg. set that up. But it's 2-2. Once again, this group continues to be very competitive. Like you said, the fourth average around about the 80 mark. Fifth leg, it's Mal to throw first. Game on. Will it be the fact that this guy is throwing first the deciding factor? 60. 60. You look at the way Scott Walters played yesterday. He was unlucky to only pick up four points. He was on the other end of the Barilli Barrage, the 109 average. He then proceeded to average 98 and a half against Sven Verdonk, an average of just under 91. When John Desmo played his best game of the day, 94.6 when Dom Taylor was going absolutely crackers. And then, ironically, the other game that he did win was with an 82 average in this reverse fixture yesterday. 100. So, in some weird, ironic way, his worst performances have been the 55. ones which have seen him pick up the wins. Bullseye. He's thinking there, because if he stays on the 20 bed, it's uh, he's just working, he's just trying to do his maths there. It's a strange old thing, because you're itching to throw, then you doubt yourself. He's left to finish. And this would be a break of throw. All of a sudden, Walters is just turning the screw. 41. And the treble has visit for the Aussie means. Walters have become a big favour for this leg, and ultimately, the match. All about leaving it now as handily 89. as he possibly can. The 89 leaves him. Oh, guess what again? 72. People say, how do you practice, Glenn? Well, these are the types of finishes that you're going to get left so Scott many times. 72. And once it just becomes the norm in practice, transferable skills to a match for double 16. 56. Just becomes so much easier. Now you require 145. This would hurt. This would be seismic, almost cataclysmic, as far as Scott Walters Scott would have been concerned. 16. But this double eight for the break. One left in hand. Game and that second dart played. was such Scott a nice Walters. guide for the third to crash in off it. If Walters does go on a run today, remember that dart. 2-2, two, two. opponent on a double. First. Game on. With the last dart in hand, he pings that double eight. It's moments like that. That could be so important. Uh, you just get the feeling that Walters is a real momentum player. If he can get a couple of wins on the spin. But just look at Walters' next game. Dom Taylor. The fate of Scott Walters for 100. me is over the next 30 to 45 minutes. If he can get through this game, and by hook or by crook, get through Dom Taylor. Then becomes a big, big favourite to qualify for Saturday night. So it's all in his hands. And also, you're picking Dom back in the race. V 140. Picks up another win, moves on to 12. Even though mathematically he can still be caught, 
You just think because of all the scenarios to be played just underneath, you would think that he'd probably have about a foot in the finals tomorrow. Eighty-one. Just when you think Walters, one hundred. Taking full control. That's a big return there from Malcolm, and he gives him a good chance. He could go tops, tops here for the match. One hundred and seventeen. Close, but not quite close enough. And so this is the hail mary for Mal. Fifteen. And the bull to save it for the bull. Forty-five. Not to be. Required twenty. He's been far from his best. He's got two darts, a double five, and it's Game. Scott Walters Shot. who the takes the two Scott points. Walters. It was a tale of missed opportunities. The big Aussie would be really disappointed to lose that game. For Scott Walters, he needed something. He needed a spark. Could it just be that nothing to separate them in the tail of the tape? They're very much the same. It just come down to a couple of doubles here and there. But it's Scott Walters who was up and running on this final day of Group C. Next up, John Desmarot against Andy Jenkins. Don't miss that after the break. So game three, and it's time for the Joker in the pack to come out to play. Andy Jenkins, a late replacement for Sven Verdonk, who is here today supporting his Belgian buddy, John Desrum. I had a chat with him earlier, going to get some treatment when he gets back to Belgium and wish him all the best. Uh, but Desremo, he's turned his week around, lost 70% of his matches on Monday and Tuesday, but has won 70% across Wednesday and Thursday. I say this quietly, but results have actually gone Jenkins' way so far. It is still unlikely he will qualify, but he will relish being the wrecking ball in this group. Right, back to Henry Deacon and Glenn Durant. He's back, Andy Jenkins, here at the Super Series. And Rocky is going to be on the hockey, and he is looking to cause some carnage here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. This is probably a position in which Andy Jenkins is going to relish. He's going to embrace, because... 
look, he has got a mathematical chance of qualifying. Of course he has. 60. But the real the realisticness about it, it's unlikely. But goodness me, would Andy Jenkins love to be able to upset that apple cart? 140. Yeah, looked really chipper this morning. I had a nice little chat with him, tell him how much I like this shirt. I was working with Colin Lloyd last week and was wearing it. 59. And yeah, he just seemed really happy. You can see he's a big impression in the players' area there. I think they were glad when he walked in too. I'm not sure if they knew he was uh, actually the person playing 81. today. But yeah, it's great to see him. I don't think he's thinking about qualifying. Um, I heard the giggles when the odds came up, but 60. just a great opportunity. A nice match day's practice. And what will be, will be. But what a story. And we can't help but dream in here. So leave us to it. If Andy Jenkins 72. makes the final tomorrow night, we will never hear the end of this story. He will let us know. And he will bring a very big following with him to the live lounge in Portsmouth. Let's show a bit of respect also to John Desmer, who's been excellent this week. Yes. Chris Murphy said on the balcony earlier at the beginning of the show, 98. his first 10 games this week, he lost seven of them. His final 10 games, he's won 10 of them. That's the type of 65. upward spiral that you like to see John, for upon, someone like John. For John, I just, he, he definitely needs to find another gear. It's just a little bit same old, same old as he looks for treble 17. The double top. And all the talk of Andy Jenkins, Andy it would have been nice to put that one for bed for him. Sixty-six. John, you so, require thirty. For the opening leg break, John Dezimo, who, as the days go along, well, I was going to say he's getting more and more settled on the stage, but he's missed the big number there. And so it means it's only going to be one dart in his hand at double eight. 31, but he pushes it inside. And Andy Jenkins 94. here, who's been completely out of this opening leg, frozen out of it, is going to get two darts at tops to win it. Game shot in the first leg. Andy That's Jenkins. the way to do it. Isn't that just typical of darts, though, Henry? Someone dominates a leg of dart. John Desmond has not settled. Second leg is Just John looking at his whole demeanor and the way his Game darts on. have been going at the board. Assessing every dart he's through this week. I think he'd be really, really disappointed to do that. He's in a decent position to join the gaggle of players on six. But I don't know. There's just part of me there. He should really have galloped through that 55. leg. Fifty-five. And that will be hurting. If anyone thinks you can just switch off and move on to the next leg, it's not as easy as that. So, what do we know about Andy Jenkins then? 100. Well, a challenge to a winner in 2019 and 2021. The first question to Mr. Stato himself. Who did he beat in the 22. final of them two challenge tours? I know that his last challenge tour was challenge tour 10. That's not the question I asked. I said, who did he beat in the Challenge Tour Finals? 60. Both not UK. I'm going to say the last one was Jan Van Veen. No. 100. Boris Koltsov and Karol Sedlacek. So, you know, even as recent as 2021, Andy Jenkins is still winning big, big amateur competitions. That 56. Challenge Tour is just this. Is the Tour just under... Being a professional dart player, where a lot of the Moda Super Series players come from, and a lot of the big names there. Uh, but you go all the way back to 1994 to 98 when he represented England, even the England Open champion in 2000. So he's had a, a real fantastic career as Andy. Now applying his trade in the World Seniors. Qualified for that particular competition this year, and that was. Mainly because well, Richie Housen qualified, I think it was something John, like five times that particular competition. And so Andy Jenkins got his place courtesy. And the order of merit, but will Desmo be merited this leg? Andy, Not this time. 84. And so Jenkins here could open up a 2-0 lead. And this would be the perfect start for Rocky on the hockey as he looks to bend the ball. 59. Well, I think his handprint there on that left. 20. He thought, that this is close. John hasn't settled. This would be a real settler. Game shot in the second it's leg. One -one. It's 1-1. You talk about the World Seniors, Henry. He lost to Richie Housen. The Owl. Isn't there a football team nicknamed the Third Owls? Third leg is Andy to throw first. Game on. 
Yeah, but we only talk about that on Wednesday. What if they played last night? 124. I swear I know someone that, that supports a team like that. Yeah. Andy Jenkins, real semi-final feel to his CV. The last ever news of the world. 1997, he lost in the semis to Ian White. Semis of the PDC World Championships in 07. 44. That famous Barney Taylor final where he lost to Barney in the semis. Semi-final, the UK Open in 2004. The year Roland Schultz won it, lost to John Part. Semi-final of the Grand Prix 2002. The year Phil Taylor won it, beaten by, yep, John Part. Best run at the match for the last day. It's a real 100. great career. Longevity is so difficult in darts. You know, I mean, I, I appreciate that more than anybody right now. But like I said, when he started representing England in 94, and still to be winning Challenge 2s in 2021. And everything about Andy has just been Andy. It's not really changed over the course of his career. You don't see much deviation in terms of his set up and equipment. I remember he came here once and he changed his flights for one night. He tried a different set and he just then went back to Old Faithfuls. Jenks has been Jenks throughout the course of his career and that's why he's had such longevity within the sport. 96. There's a lot of rhythm in that side view there. If we'll have a little look at that, I'll try and assess a little bit. We'll get this leg over because John Desmond is just leg. beginning to fight back now. I think that first leg looked a little bit nervy. I think he totally understood that it was a must-win match for him. He Fourth has to join them to players first. on six points. On. He can't afford to lose this game. Came out the traps very nicely and then messed about with the doubles. And at that point, we figured a little bit for him. He's now taking a 2-1 lead against Jenks. One hundred and forty. Andy Jenkins games have been about tenacity. It's been about aggression. You can see every single dart he throws. One hundred and forty. Andy Jenkins has forty. Hasn't been a massive one eighty hitter, John Desmero, this week. If he can start turning them tons into ton forty, he's doing in this leg. One forty, one forty from Jenks. Ton one forty from Desmero. Perfect marker. 16. That's the first trebleless visit. So Jenkins has got the dart, and this would be a breaker throw to get back on track. I like the bull here. 105. And so does Jenks. And quite simply for Desmero, it's 201 in six darts, please. Good start. 136. What a leg of darts this is. This is one of the favoured finishers, and he'll hate that dart. 76. What a set up play. Great leg of darts Johnny after 12 darts. 65. Jenks on a one dart. A Desmond will be looking at the bullseye area. 105. One dart atop. This is massive. 45. And once again, drops and below. 40. Now, after what was a slow start to this game, Jenkins has brought his there. average to 84 and a half, a 13 darter. To break the throw and level up at two apiece in this particular encounter. Fifth Andy, Andy who, to throw first. as we mentioned, is a last-minute replacement for Sven Verdonk, who pulled out yesterday. So much so that he was actually working first thing this morning before heading over to the live lounge to play this afternoon. 60. Because obviously it was so last-minute, he had to do bits and bobs, and then he's come down to play. Builder, is he? Or, yeah. He's in that sort of trade, 100. yeah. 100. Yes, I just looked at my CCTV. Check the builders are there at mine as well. Looking forward to getting home to see. 100. My new Hope you're supplying with ample amounts of tea, Glenn. And baking sandwiches every morning she does. This is good from Desmero. 140. This game is warming up very nicely. 100. Every single dart. Any young, young player watching, it's a very traditional throw. Total polar opposite again. There's the flick of Desmero. No pullback whatsoever. Just the all 81. wrist and fingers. 
And look at the power behind that pullback there. And that's where the aggression comes from as he throws that dart. 100. Of course, in the scenario Andy's in, he's not just playing for himself, but he's kind of playing as well for the sake of the competition. So everybody has that fair crack at the whip to go through. 140. So 141 for 3 2 Lee with Desimo sat on tops, and the Belgian is going to get a go. And this could be potentially here 65. for a one of legs, which would make Johnny it three in a 40. row when it comes to 13 darters. The Game hard work the was done leg. with a setup player. And after that second dart miss there, once again, when he resets and gives himself one dart to tops, he just looks Six like Sven. Sven is in the building, supporting his good friend. And Andy Jenkins will be a little frustrated because when you see your opponent miss two darts, it even looked like it covered a lot of that double top bed. But just snuck it in there, and a nice hundred scores advantage to the Belgian right now. This game is blossoming a little bit like a buttercup. First couple of legs, a little bit below par, but since leg three, 13, 13, 15. Real good scoring power. I haven't seen a max yet in this match, but if we show you the scoring power pack, have a look at the ton 40 plus scoring of John Dezavo. 45. And that's correlated opportunities at doubles, but opportunities he by and large hasn't been able to take. Have a look at that. Three from 10 for the Belgium in stark comparison to the two from four success rate of Andy Jenkins. Thirty nine. Is that the moment John Desmarais can see the finishing post? Sixty six. More worry in there. They were just all over the place. A fat one, a fat five in the middle of that treble 20. And Andy Jack, as you feel, will be all over that. 97. Still advantage to the Belgian. But Andy Jenkins is one of those players you've physically got to put away. He's not one of those you could possibly psychologically beat in this scenario. And possibly here, he has 25. opened up a door for him. 167 is all he can leave from 192. And so a couple of trebles here would have made things very interesting indeed. Yeah, we said Desmarais was feeling 16. it in the first leg. His last 12 darts when he can see January that finishing post. 68, 63, 66 and 25. But he's still in front in this leg. Back upstairs. 139. After all the bad dart is thrown. That is set up to live the highest quality. And is that the end of the hopes for Andy Jenkins? 40. John Double 14 for John Desimo to pick up another win. Game. In it Shot. goes. It's a 4-2 success John for John Desimo to get the better of Andy Jenkins by four legs to two. The killer B is on the board for the day. Doing so of an 89.34 average, 4 of 11 when it came to the doubles. For Andy Jenkins, a first game flurry of 80.85, two out of four, uh, two out of four, shall I say. He got better as the match went along, and we'll see how he improves as the day goes along. After the break, it's the beginning of round two. We see Scott Walters up against Dom Taylor.
Next up here at the Modus Super Series, another crucial clash, particularly for Scott Walters, who got the early win he needed against Malcoming, but now faces the task of taking down table-topping Dom Taylor, who also won his first game. He is on 10 points at the top of the table. John Desremo behind him now on eight after that victory against Andy Jenkins, and Walters on six, along with Cumming and Barilli in this group. So, big game particularly for Walters, for Taylor. If he wins it, he's just about got one foot in finals night. Right, back to the boys in the commentary box to talk you through another big bout. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. This is a real heavyweight clash here. And for Scott Walters, who's been probably a big favourite in most of his games, I think it's time to stand up and deliver. And what a better opponent to do against against top of the table, Dom Taylor. This has all the ingredients to be a mighty fine game. Pick a winner, Henry. It's hard to decipher, really, isn't it? First leg, it's Scott to play uh, first. Game on. There's just something about Dom, isn't there, this week? Scott Walters showed some really good levels yesterday, has to be said, but... 120. first game, missed 12 darts at double, averaged 81.2. And he still felt, even though he beat Malcoming, you felt there was still a lot more left in the tank. 85. just beating the opponents, isn't he, at the moment? But I don't know, I have a little sneaky feeler for Scott Walters here. But what I would say to Scott, this is your moment right now. 55. You know, you got through a game there. Yeah, he's not at his best. Clearly see that. But he's in the mix. One hundred. Four players on six points now. One hundred. Every game is valid. You're going to see a lot of games. Players second to to fifth who've got a big, big chance of getting that second spot. I think we'll potentially 81. be resigned to the fact that Dom Taylor will qualify if he wins this game. But kind of amongst the pigeons times. Scott Walters can do the job. One hundred and forty. He keeps looking at his hands there, so I'm not 100% certain he's happy with a grip on his dart right now in, in relation to Scott Walters. I always find it amazing how Dom just goes into the ones and fives because he's got a beautifully timed throw. It looks like it's going to go where it wants to go. Scott, you require 81. But it looks as if the first leg isn't going to go the way he'd like it to. 12... Treble 12 leaves double 13. 68. Was it Dom you require? Just a little rush there. Just a touch more of a composed attempt at that double 13. Well, you don't want to give this guy any chances. Big finishes yesterday. 120. Ooh, bends the wire. Scott, you require 13. Look, you need commentary. Just look at the face there of Dom Taylor. Big moments in this match. Two darts, double four. Huge dart. Nine. Advantage, Dom Taylor. Taylor, who has just grazed the double 18 wire for 156. He won his last game for 147. Game and he really is leg. in the mood Dom today, Taylor. isn't he? 16 dart break. And he knows that at times it wasn't the rip rowing best of Dom Second Taylor, but he found a game real off. good flat line level yesterday, which is enough to win four out of five. And it feels like going into today's affairs, there is just a top level tower 140 ready to really burst onto the scene yeah, i think scott walters may struggle he looked a little dejected there i get the feeling when scott goes one nil up two two nil up, he sort of runs away with games what he has to do now is just show just a little different side because you have to be adaptable in these best of seven games and now he needs to do have that fighting quality against the opponent who's looking in mean from averaging 100. over 100 once again well, if he carries on at these levels, he's going to be simply irrepressible going into tomorrow. 100. Yeah, his last average yesterday was 100.91. His first average this morning, 103.52. 91. And if he wins again here in impressive style, he's got an almost oligarchic 
level of control on this group. Oleg, Oleg, oligarchic. 91. Dom Uruguay, 170. The fish. One hundred. Scott, you require one hundred and seventy. We saw the big fish last night from Jeremy Fogg. It would have been a Hail Mary finish for Scott Walters. Dom, you require seventy. That's my line. Game shot in He's the second quality, this guy. Dom Taylor. This guy just effectively and efficiently just gets on with the job. We've been to big talks of Robert Thornton. Third leg big chats about first Mike Warburton, on. even Scott Walters. But right now, this guy is in prime form. His averages are the best this week. He's looking focused, determined. 135. And I think his plan this morning is let's get the 12, 14 points very quickly. And then I can start planning my assault for tomorrow night. He's looking the real business. And the thing is with Dom Taylor is beyond possibly winning a week, if he actually went through to Champions Week, you'd have to make him a real-life contender to then go on and win that. That's the levels this guy has. Oh, he's like the blue-touch paper, that's for sure. It's a single line on your card here. 43. Not at this juncture, you won't. That was a great time to get wax lyrical in our Middlesbrough or coaching. Anyway, you must have been really pleased with the big result in the football 16. last night. Newcastle United beating Brighton 4 1. You've been awful to me this week, you. <laughs> laughing at Middlesbrough, laughing at my dark, dark game. 16. And now a swear word of. I can't even say it. New C Castle. Sixty. It's got a little bit quiet, Dom Taylor, and that's one. The only problem that he probably has now is just maybe assuming that he's there already. He's got a job to do because this is arguably his 99. toughest opponent today, Scott Walters. He hasn't demonstrated his real qualities over the past twenty-four hours. But he can turn that switch on at any time. I really like this guy. Played at the highest level, played on the Pro Tour circuit, plays championships. Scott, Uruguay, 164. You feel he's at a real crossroads, don't you, Dom, right now? Is this year. He'll, 100. We'll be focusing on things like the Challenge 2, the Motor Super Series, but he has to have his eyes on getting through Q School next year. Well, this is the first year he's not eligible for the development tour, which says that he's now entering a new stage and a new phase in his career and that kind of phase now where he'd like to kick 64. on and achieve some of the goals that he wants to harbour. Walter's looking to harbour the 64. He's going to get one dart in his hand at tops. 24. Dom, you require 112. The way Dom's been finishing. He's got one heck of a chance on this. Even more now. Ninety-six. Scott, you require forty. It's my pet hate that clap. Robert Thornton does a lot this week. This has to go, Scott. Two wires. Game shot in the third. And a double five. Scott Walters. As he prays upstairs, he's still in this match. It was just for a holder throw. If he's going to win this match, Scott Walters is going to have to break the throw. This man in your picture, and that won't be an easy job for anybody this week. He's praying up to the high and mighty, but the high and mighty tower, Taylor. 134. He's just... He's just going along at such a pace, isn't he? Just You just know that whatever you 100. do, he's going to hit something back. That must be awful to play against. Yeah, especially when it's his dart as well. He's really focusing well when he's... Got them first three darts when you're both sat on 5 or 1. So it's 60. very tough for the opponents to get close if you're hitting a 140 each time. 140 would be nice here. 
100. I'll tell you what, after that first out there, Henry, I think you'll be slightly disappointed. Now it's just a 3 one game will be the focus of Dom Taylor right now. And for Scott Taylor, the score with power has been uncharacteristically 15. low from his perspective. We're a game and a half in with him, and he's only hit one maximum so far. When you consider that he had a night where in four games he hit 18 55. maximums. Yeah, that, that release is not as smooth as when I last saw him. He's up against it. It's easy when you're top of the table. And look how smooth that is. It's just going in with just with ease. 131. Moving along. It's quite some poise, quite some vigour. And the 134 and the 131 sandwich between 260 visits. So he's just recovered things now in this leg. And he's going to get first go at this 116. These mid-range finishes which can change the flow and change the complexion of the game. That's not actually a bad first dart for Dom to find the treble, which would have left a favourable double 18 for 100. him. 100. Scott, you require 154. He's put some pressure on this, 16. 140. You have to feel. Dom, you require 16. The way Dom is playing right now. This is meat and drink for him. Game shot in the fourth leg. There's the Dom obligatory Taylor. fist pump. He's in a good spot right now. He's in a good place. When you go fifth back to that drink to table, Andy three went up. It's a nice feeling. So he's just making sure. He's just thinking now. Look, I haven't got the darts in this leg, so I'm just going to let them fly. I'm going to enjoy them because I know I've got the darts in next leg. I can see me up on and shaking his head and moving his arms about. So if I can just. Start with a 140. I'll take fun, full control of this match. I think the other thing as well is he... 96. Looks as if there's more gears to go. You feel like Tom's still just booming underneath the surface. And so far today, he had that brilliant 103.52. He's averaging just under 92 here. Three out of five on the doubles. Just his flights are quite small, like a kite shaped flight, so you won't see an awful lot of deviation. You get something like a flight path where it's landing right at the last second. And with Scott Walters, because he holds the dart so low on the barrel, he's going in a lot flatter, even bordering on under stacking. For Tom, is the flight pattern weird for someone whose darts stand up like that? Because traditionally in the past, we've seen players with those kind of kite shaped flights be the type of players that sometimes can be the understackers of the game. I suppose Phil Taylor being the most potent example of which. Yeah, but Phil, obviously, then you look at the height. Phil Taylor was five foot seven, so the, his darts were coming in from the underbelly. 100. This guy is Don't so tall, it's coming from, from the sky. Well, he's playing darts from the heavens at the church. And so Walters Leafy needs a Hail on. Mary. Scott, you require 90. He needs to say a little prayer. The ball. The Game answer to his prayers. Prayer. Scott Walters. Back to 3-2, but Taylor has the darts. Yeah, I wasn't so sure about that bullseye first Sick dart with your opponent and 108. First. Game on. I'm glad I stayed quiet. Like I said, the strength of Dom so far is when he's had the dart in his hand and he's started off every leg 100. with at least a ton. And that trend continues. Scott Walters needs a trademark 180 and he needs it now. Even a 140 could have done a bit of damage. 100. Ton just kind of equals things out. Kind of really does nothing from his perspective because you expect something big from this man. Another one. 130. Excellent switch over to the 18s. He just plays the game very smart. It'll be very tough for anyone to break him this week on his throw. 81. Be being hypercritical, he'd be working on the fact of trying to break players down their, their throw, but when he's got darts in hand, he's a tough proposition to beat. 100. He's looking good for this leg. Player of the week so far? You have to say so. He's just 
at the beginning was just beating the players in front of him, but now he's just putting in some dominant performances. Sports again, averaging just shy of 95 here. To go with 103 this morning. So you'd have to say he is the man to beat. And he's got six to beat well, Scott Walters. And he leaves double 18 after 12. Three out of five on the doubles. 96 average near on. 55. Sort of gave up on the last Don't start there, did Scott? But for Dom Turler, 36 for a very impressive game. game. And a sure. very formidable match, performance Taylor. there for Dom Turler, who's now giving himself one heck of a chance to be here on Saturday night. He's just doing the right things at the right time, and the fist pump tells you everything. 103 average earlier and a 96 this time. Look at that checkout ratio as well. 66%, four from six. Absolutely superb, Dom Turler. And next up, it's Mark Borelli against John Desmarot. This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night for a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly here at our purpose built venue in Portsmouth every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. For all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back. Match four saw Dom's dominance continue as Taylor towers over the field at the top of the table. But in game five, the focus is on this emergence of now second place John Desremo, who struggled at the start of the week, but Killer B has found his sting over the last couple of days. And if he can defeat Mark Barilli, the Belgian will put a four-point buffer between himself and the chasing pack, including his opponent here. That would be a big gap to bridge at this stage of the group. Can we see some of that Mark Barilli magic that he does keep producing from time to time, or will Desremo continue his good form? Let's find out. Glenn and Henry are describing the action. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, is it going to be a kind of magic for Mark Barilli? Well, he played well against Dom Taylor, average 91.18, but there was really no answer, no antidote for the dominance of Dom so far today. As for John Desremo, the... Killer B, 4-2 victor against First Andy Jenkins, 89 First average, but has to be said, as impressive he was in spells, he did allow Andy Jenkins to have a couple of openings here and there, but he's been the form player probably now since around about Wednesday afternoon. Eight points to his name, 
looking to move on to double figures. Yes, that'll be the motivating factor, getting to that 10 points. 140. You have to say, Dom Taylor's just beginning to run away with things. And yeah, this game's a must win for Mark Morelli. 39. After he lost that opening game to Dom Taylor, it was his chance. I don't think there's any more chances for the Scott now. For Desmond, he's just quietly getting on with it, doing his job. He hasn't been spectacular. 121. But he's in a great position. Started this match very nicely. 43. Morelli started like he's still in the practice area. 44. Oh, this is good. 140. This is special. I feel there's a bit of payback here, isn't 135. there? 135. Just sorting out one or two technical issues. So what we'll do, we'll have a little bit of a chat about what we've seen so far today here at the Super Series. And, well, the, the story of the day so far, quite simply, has to be how impressive John Don Taylor 100. has been at the start of the day, winning both of his matches. But we've managed to sort out that little... Technical glitch and Desimo looking at tops for Ton Topper. 80. Yeah, that was for an 11 darter. Here comes Borelli. I like the bullseye in the last dart there. And the reason players do that John, you is the fact 20. they leave themselves a two darter. It's in the hands of the Belgian. He's really stretching for that double ten there. They're not well thrown dart at all. He just moves over, sees the no bed. Score. It's five missed darts Mark at the double. 96. Mark Borelli, who didn't have an awful lot looking group here. Had a couple of chances yesterday. Oh, he'd be frustrated with that. On first point, I thought that was treble 15 myself. 39. No more mistakes from Desmero this time. 20. This has been the Achilles heel for the Killer B today. It's been missed darts a double. And it may well no cause him trouble. Because Barilli is back for 57. 57 to take the leg from underneath the nose of John Desimo. That would have been a sucker punch. Yeah, it's typical John of darts. And I just 20. automatically thought that Mark Barilli would hit that there. And that's where you focus. You've got to hurt players when you get a crazy chance like that because Game John dominated that leg. John Desramo. And not only would it have been a point for Mark Borelli and a leg on the ball, but it would have just been a real kick in the belly. Second leg is Mark to throw first. By Borelli to Desmaro. Well, I think what we're learning straight away is where John's strengths and weaknesses today are lying. It's John to throw first. Game on. I think Mark Borelli's done that three times this week. He's itching to grab the throw. Twenty-four. John saying, "Mark, do you want to throw first? Forty-two. This is a bit of a stinker. Just get the feeling with these games, these players from second to fifth players, the, these four pointers, they're going to be edgy. Ninety-seven. Both players twenty points down in their running average, and there's the nod ahead from Borelli saying, "Yep, yeah, I know it's there 140. somewhere." One hundred and forty. But what I would say to you, Mark, is grit your teeth, find something from somewhere. It's kind of been out of tune for the rest of the session so far because it's in a really impressive standard, it has to be said. The lowest average so far was just underneath 81 from Andy Jenkins and that we can give a little bit of a caveat towards why that was the, the case anyway. Been a good standard so far today. This has just been a little bit of a dovetail of it. And in fairness, in terms of the scoring phase of the opening leg, John Desimo is quite impressive. It was just 13. a failure to finish off. It took him at his 10th attempt to... Take out the double ten.
Other than that, it's been forty five. It's been a really enjoyable session, it has to be said. One hundred and twenty five. Yes, the fifth time they've met this week. It's two two. One hundred and forty. Not a lot to separate between them, but this, you feel, is the biggest encounter between the pair of them. I thought yesterday Borelli was excellent against Desmarot. Mark, you require seven. But as Henry alluded to earlier, it's just been flashes with Borelli this week. Tops. 55. And you can see the frustration as he dips low. And Borelli had the chance to hurt Desmarot last time. John has a chance for treble 17 here. Just a scrappy little messy game, this Henry. Well, this has been the trend this if week with do. John Desimo. The first game's Mark been really impressive. And in the second day, game, every single day, is dipped below the average of the first. But really to level up once double 10. And now double 5. And now it's his turn to scratch around and try and find a double. 10. Yeah, this is the Borelli of Tuesday and Wednesday. There was a marked, marked improvement yesterday. A stunning 109 average in his first game of the day. Desmond can take real control of this match and a big control of second place. Game shot in the second leg. John Desramai. Been a tale of missed opportunities for both players so far. But the guy tuning it up there. Third Shoulders are down, heads first. down. Game on. Right, but he's just got to work out just two more legs. He continues to look up to Sven. It's nice to just have that little nod of appreciation from a 19. friend, uh, maybe a fist pump or something. Clearly, there's no chatting between them, but it's just nice to have something. But John's in a, just a total world where he's overthinking his match. He's got to get right back to basics now. 31. Feels like they're both just dragging each other through the mud, aren't they? 34. Yeah, if it was a cartoon, you'd actually see the steam coming out of Borelli's ears right now. That's how angry he is. He knows this is his opportunity. Borelli's doing ab 60. absolutely nothing against the substandard below par, John Desmarais. If you were a cartoon character, what would you be? 48. Do you remember Wacky Races? A bit before my time, but... Well, you asked me the question. <laughs> Once again, we're just correcting a couple of scores here. And John Desmond might be a good... Actually, might be a good point, actually, for both players. I think the actual break could actually do him a favour when you just consider the pattern of play in this match. Welcome to the commentary box. Henry Deacon and Glenn Durrant here describing all the action for you this afternoon. Let's talk about then what we've seen today. And we'll begin with Dom Taylor because he's been the player of the day so far. Two victories, averages of 103 and 96 respectively. He's been the standout star. He's been sensational. I'm absolutely so surprised at these two. We 28. Did, we did a Luto and I think Mark's doing the right thing right now. He's thinking enough's enough, Mark. What is happening here? Come on, he's doing absolutely nothing that I can't beat. Why am I doing this? Let's just relax. It's a very difficult position to be in because it's telling me that he's practicing well in the practice area. He's had that big chance. Dom did a real good job on him and absolutely out of nowhere. 123. Just nowhere near. Just slide into five. 70. When you go low five, it's usually a late release. So it's just a... The fact that maybe he just hasn't got his timing right today. I would just like to see just a little bit more focus, which is very difficult for someone like Borelli because he's such a flair play, such a fluid. He relies on rhythm. But I like that first, hmm, once again, it's sliding into the five there. He's trying everything. He's trying to really focus. He's trying to slow that first part, the element of the process of the 44. throw down. Just nothing is working. But fair play to him there. He didn't just fling them darts this time. He is working on the job. 60. So both players on a finish. Barilli first up with this 1-3-8 attempt. This is to 
bring it back to two. One not to be on this occasion. So Desabo back for the 156. We've seen Don Taylor wire Don't this earlier on today. Not to be on this occasion. So Barilli back for 78, but it's going to be under palpable pressure. Mark, you require 78. Yeah, it needs something this game. Oh, dear me. What a return, though. 68. John, you require 22. John Desmer had a double 11 yesterday, and he was so aggressive with the first start, it went plum. Now it's difficult now because you're frightened of it in the big 11. And now there's, you're not frightened at all. You know, you've got one dart in your hand. You can be aggressive. No score. But just absolutely Mark nowhere near. Let's see if it caught that first dart, didn't it? Now, how awkward is that? I think part of, you, part of his thinking there, there that should have really. and could have bust. And the fact he had that second chance there, and it's 2-1, absolutely playing his D Four game. It's John to throw first. Game on. With Desmarot playing his C-plus game. It's been a very disappointing first. Can the second part of this match be better? It was almost disrespectful to his D game. I'm just looking. Maybe Mal Cummins, the one guy who's really happy at this stage. Has Scott Walters got anything left in him 16. now? You feel like he can't lose another game from here. He's played one more than the protagonists around him. But more to the point, if Desimo loses this game, it won't just be the fact that he's 16. lost this game, but... Look, whoever loses this game, no matter what the fashion is, they'll look at it and think, well, they're now gettable because of the performance that they've been putting in. I think what it does mean is Dom Taylor's sat there with a the cigar in hand, getting himself 60. ready for Saturday night because there's nothing he can't beat. It's not the fact they're off target. It's the fact that they're 41. so low as well. And when their dark goes low under a treble, that's telling you that they're feeling it. 140. And that's the frustration for Brelli because he can just do that at any time. Sixty. Treble us again. This would be a break of throw for the Scot. 60. The shake of the head tells you they were well thrown darts, but no reward. 100. So for 3 1, he's going to get a go at the ton. How handy can Barilli leave things here? That first dart, when it goes in like that, it's so nice for him. And then went down for the ball last dart in hand. And so Desimo John, you require 100. to make it 3 1. Once a ton. Hit the treble last time. Now it's decisions. Top stops. Or treble 20 for double 10. He's been woeful on the doubles. When he needs it most. 80. He still can't Mark deliver. 93. Options here. Bullseye or treble 19. So he's not guaranteed a dart at the bullseye or a double now. So treble 14. All he can do is lay up. 53. Desmond has messed John about on this double 20. 10. And it cost him a leg. Time to stand up and be counted. What a strange game darts is when things aren't going. The mechanics of your arm is not working well because they're not just missing. 16. They're missing by a country mile. Mark, you require 40. Game shot in the fourth. Barilli's leg. brought it back Mark to 2-2. Two, two and Look, he's now going to have to sense opportunity here because Desimo is having opportunity after opportunity and he just cannot, by hook and by crook, first. find a way of taking advantage of them. And he's got to think now, well, my opponent just cannot finish me off, so I'm going to do the job on his behalf. Yeah, there's a, there's a word that keeps ringing in my ears about this game, and it's 45. confidence. And when your confidence is down mid-game, it can be so difficult. You just have to find something from within, and sometimes it's just a case of stepping back. 60. Starting from scratch, keeping it basic. And it's funny how a first leg can dictate the whole flow of the game. And then suddenly, out of like, nowhere, Barilli finds the first max of the match. But when you, when you look at the complexion of this game, the first leg was actually really good as far as Desmo was concerned. He hit 141-2-1-140 to leave himself 
on a ton after nine and then 95. unraveled on the doubles and that's kind of set the pace for the game to follow. I'm thinking Borelli can't believe he's looked that he's still in this match and all of a sudden 100. he has just slipped into third gigging out. He went for the bull last time. 81. He went for the bull because he feels 76 finishes better than the 81, but it was such an inviting treble 20, that second dart. Oh, but he has left a two dart at. 140. No. Mark, you require 100. Who is the best finisher right now? Eighty. John, you require one hundred and three. Thirty darts at the double. The pair of these players have had eighteen for this man in your pitch. He looks at eighty-four. What moments that is, and what Mark, a wire that 20. is to hit. No score. Mark Borelli. John, you require the head of Borelli will feel like spaghetti at this particular moment in time. I think both players are take one point at this juncture. Game shot in the fifth They won't care how, John they won't Desiree. care why. Decimo's 3-2 up and he has the darts to get the game won. Incredibly, in this game, Six leg, it's John he to throw has first. missed game 19 on. darts at double. But it's been enough to go 3-2 up. It's not been a classic, not by any stretch of the imagination. We can't sugarcoat that fact. 100. But it's two points. Exactly that. And in the scheme of things, because they've played well against, they've had some good battles this week. This is not a, like a clash of styles where they're hitting, playing each other. 140. For me, this is a battle because they can see that second place. High, wide and handsome, but and it's just affecting their games right now. 81. It was just thinking it's about throwing 22, 24 grounds, but there's just so much more. And when, when you're messing about, when your brain's saying other things and your technique goes out the window, 40. your confidence is dry. It's going to be a really, really tough match. 81. Just everything snatchy, isn't it? Wonder what Mal coming out of Jenkins are thinking in the practice room because they would have probably guessed this game would have lasted maybe 10, 15 minutes 57. if it went this deep. They wouldn't have expected this. And sometimes, can you watch a game in the practice room and inadvertently see what's happening here, and then it can kind of creep into 99. your game? Can it? Can what happens on stage in one game actually affect the mood of other games? Yeah, you're practicing. You're throwing three darts and watching the game from you. One hundred and thirty-nine. John, you require 140. Yeah, you've always got one eye on the match. Because a lot of them might like to practice maybe five minutes before, so they could have been up now 15 minutes expecting this to be finished by now. 36. Mark, you require 125. Just don't think Desmero wants to win this game. And Borelli's given him every single chance. If you wonder why he went for the 1 2 5. 99 players out of 100 would go for the bull first out, but the 18s would leave 107 74. if you hit the single. John, you require 104. This is for the match. A match that neither player will want to remember. And the best three darts could be the last three. There's the reset. It's been a tale and tale of war on the doubles, and they continue. Mark, you require 51. And so Barilli is reprieved. It's going to be two at tops to save it. 31. But it doesn't go. And Desimo returns to 32 to win 4 2. It's John, been a bit 32. of a slugfest, it has to be said. But Desimo could be on the verge of picking up the points. And that'll be the important thing for him because it would put him onto double figures if he can find double eight. Sixteen. Absolutely no confidence whatsoever that going Mark, in. Mark, you require twenty. If Mark Borelli gets through this game, well. Game shot in the sick flag. Most Mark insane Borelli. game I've watched this week. The one of the least quality. 
and one of the most important. Seventh and this final is leg. where we Mark enter the territory of they like, don't buy averages on trophies. It's a huge two points. That's what they've got to remember. And Mark Borelli's throwing first in this last leg. You've got to try and eradicate all them thoughts. And just put your best. Put yourself a little 12 to 15 data in. It's typical that when one player plays well. 100. The other's right behind. I mean, it couldn't get any worse. Are they saving their best till last? Can they find a final flourish? Can they find a kick to the line? 92. I think Mark Borelli's been involved in more games over 20 minutes this week than he's ever done. 100. I can tell you he's played games in under six or seven minutes, best of seven. And all of a sudden, you should look at the ball. 130. Scores of 134, 92 and 130 for Borelli. By far his best scoring leg. And right behind him is the Belgian. How on earth do you try and analyse this game? Both saving the best to last. And out of nowhere, the Belgian has 1-2-1 one, one for a 12. John, you require 120. Well, if you're going to find a max, leave it for your last possible scoring visit. But he won't take out the 1-2-1. One, one, and so Barilli is back for 21. 55 to see the game through. Mark, you require it 55. hasn't been a classic, but it will be enough for the points. Well, the 45 leaves yeah, double five sure. for Mark Barilli to get Barilli. the win by four legs of three, beating John Desimo in the end. Barilli the victor, a win that puts him on to eight points. Level with John Desimo, it makes things very interesting in terms of the group complexions. And so Barilli, a 4-3 victor in a game marred by missed doubles after the break. Mal Cumming up against Andy Jenkins. So Mark Barilli has just joined the eight-point party, going level with John Desremo in a huge win, really, not just for him, but for the rest of the group. Mike Warburton, of course, won Group 8 earlier this week, and two players from this group will join him at finals night. Mal Cumming is hoping to be one of them, the Australian trying to ensure his two-week stint in Portsmouth ends tomorrow and not today. Any defeat is damaging at this point, and no doubt Andy Jenkins will be happy to play the bad guy. Only good guys in commentary, though, Back to Henry Deacon and Glenn Durrant. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, the real spoiler role Andy Jenkins could play right now, and he's not someone who Mal Cumming probably wants to see right now. Both of them will probably be practising to start the game maybe 10 minutes prior to this, but we'll just witness there a real seven leg where you could just see how much tension is in them players round about this place second to fifth because it's right open for grabs. You've got to feel at the top of the table player, Dom Till is running away with things. And Borelli oof, got there in the end. But boy, was first it a tough watch. Mal to throw first, game on. Now Mal Cumming has to make his move and he has to make it right now. It feels like now or never territory as far as Mal Cumming is concerned. Well, Defeat here, then he leaves himself on the back foot by a couple of points to a couple of players and we enter the territory then when Three games left, just six points left to play for. You're requiring snookers. However, we have a look at what Malcolm is coming up next. He's got Don Taylor in the next game. That's going to be difficult. But as far as his 41 end of group is concerned, he will play Mark Barilli and John Desimo in his final two matches. So if he can leave himself handily poised, 
handily placed, he could well do all the damage himself. Well, 134. One hundred and eighty. Yeah, more coming came up the traps very, very nicely. Beginning to run away with this leg. One hundred and eighty. Just keeps this game sweet for Jenkins. Needed that last start at treble there, Mal. Because ninety five. Jenks has this enigmatic flair where you can just find something from absolutely nowhere at times. Seventy two left. Went treble 12. 52. Leaves himself top. Should he return? Because this is Brian Jenkins' territory. These kind of combinations have forever been his MO. Can he find the tops? 89. Now you require 40. Big dart. Game shot in the first leg. Mal coming. And the perfect dart for Mal coming. Just as Jenkins was really beginning to kick, and that 180 was sweet as a nut. And that Second dart double to go 1 0. Malcolm on. will be a very relieved man because he came up the traps very nicely. It's a great start and an 18 dart opener for the Aussie. 95. If you were Andy Jenkins and you were in the situation that he's in today, how would you have approached it? 139. I mean, the hopes and expectations when you walk in is of a real dream day of going five out of five. But now it's about the spoiler roll. 30. Now it's just about a nice day's practice and just having some, some say in this league table. 140. You won't want to go today with a, a loss-win ratio. 85. Whether he's got some well seniors qualifications come up, it's an excellent opportunity to get a day's practice in. But for me, this is the best I've seen coming focus-wise. 100. I think he totally understands the importance of this game. So tight for that second place right now. 100. Now you require 122. It is congested like the N25 motorway at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Can come in, found the ball's eye. 97. He Good. will attack finishes. Yeah, he didn't need to do that, but very similar to Martin Adams. You know, if, if there's a finish 100. on there, I'm going to go now for it. Now you require 25. This and that. Double Game four has been very now. kind now to coming. a lot of players this week. It's just great on the eye line is double four. On the right-hand side of the ball for a right-hander. And once again, very Third generous to throw first. for the Aussie, who was in rapid time, taking the 2 nil lead. Jenkins, who in the World Seniors rankings, is ranked number six. Now he behind Richie House in that particular order of merit. 100. Above the likes of Martin Turner, who's had a really good 2023. Jim McEwen, Paul Hogan, Matt Clark, who... We've seen plenty of here at the Super 40. Series in 2023. Alan Norris. Daryl Fitton. Some really good players is ahead of in that world rankings. Yeah, Daryl Fitton played well in an exhibition in Germany last week. So I think he'll be getting himself ready. Yorville, the next one for the World Seniors. 60. Yeah, the World Masters event, which is taking place at the Westlands Arena in Yeovil on June the 24th and June the 25th. 140. Chris Mason versus Trina Gulliver to open. That will be some encounter. Some really good first round ties. It has to be said. Should be a blockbuster tournament. 27. The third of four televised tournaments in the World Seniors calendar in 2023. The World Match Play will be taking place. 59. At the latter end of the summer, the beginning of autumn at the York Barbican Theatre. Is there going to be a moment of theatre here for Mal Cumming? 132, and he require 142. Full of authority is Mal coming in this 44. game. 44. Mal, you require expected 32. expected Andy Jenkins to take control of this match. But this is brilliant from the big Aussie. 
He's done the hard work. He really deserves this. 16. That's probably been the tail of the and tape. He and 98. His war's right there. We talked about how it did last week, and the overall conclusion was if he could start hitting his doubles, he could be a real danger. And this will be... Game shot in the third. That will hurt. Andy Not only Jenkins. did they take two darts, you know, Malcolm wasn't even looking as they were going in. And when you hear that referee say game Fourth shot, leg is Andy to throw you can first. see the frustration is evident for Malcolm. But he has to dust himself down, brush that off, and break back. Fine, Jenks. 100. Time to start. Coming into two treble visit here, who's had... He darts in his hand for a 3 0 lead. 85. How a match can just turn just like that. Missed dart at a double. And then a, a 98 checkout, and all of a sudden the ascendancy. 97. It's with Jenkins. And especially in this best of seven leg format where things can quickly change. If we're playing, say, in a rather longer form format, say a best of 19, say, yeah, it might have some. Say, but it's not going to be all consuming in the end result. But these small moments, the minor details make a major difference in this best of seven cup folk format. You have to say something like 2 2 97, now. That just keeps him. You require 164. With an outside chance. Which Jenkins to lose some here. He's doing himself no favours with these darts, 79. but there's a saviour there to leave a two dart with 85 for coming. Treble needed. All he can do is leave a real big three dart out. And you've got a little bit and lucky there, Henry. 85. So if you'd have hit a single there, you left a bogey. Does mean bullseye's going to come into it against the bolt. 60. Mal, you require Which is probably what Cummy may be looking at. Unless he can find a couple of treble 18s, then he'll be going for double seven. But just the one now he wants. 40. And he require 25. Is there any sarcastically says, well, you've left the double four, which has been good. 17. And the frustration there is missing the big now number, not the double 82. four there. Bullseye first dart at 82. 65 left, so decision. He should go big 15. 70. I and think he made the wrong eight. decision there. Hindsight, yes. Just resetting himself. That's not easy. That's not lying well. Four. And they're both on the now wire. You require 12. Centre of the board for coming. Probably didn't think he was going to be coming Game back. On the fourth leg. Mal coming. But coming back it is. And it's 3-1 to the Aussie. Well, he gets over the dejection of the last leg. Will he be causing an ejection to Jenkins in this game? 140. I, mean, I feel like it should have been 3-1 this game, but with players winning different types of legs. And that 140 start 100. there. 100. is doing everything he needs to do to stay right in the mix in this group seat. A huge fight for second place right now. 100. And the ball is doing what he needs to do. The ball may well be charging. 41. May well be trying to move his way through that middle pack and maybe try and find something towards the line in the group. He's running seemingly towards the finishing line in this game, leaving 1 3 6 after 9 with Jenkins. Languishing back in the 300s, but that 140 Mal, you require 136. just puts him behind in case something happens here. How he'd love a treble. 60. Not to be. 100. Well, that is the ultimate tap on the shoulder. That is the ultimate scoreboard 76. pressure. But is that going to force the mistake of Mal Cumming, who is going to get one dart at tops to win the match 36. to better Jenkins? But it comes and goes. Beautifully thrown darts, but just not enough. Jenkins has done the groundwork with a 180. Shot on the fifth leg. Andy Jenkins. Finishes with a plum there. Just when you thought that Mal Cumming was 
seeing the finishing line. A burst Six of energy again, from Jenkins. First, game on. And it's back on throw. It just felt like an injection of pace as well, a bit more from Jenkins here, who... There's a reason why they call him Rocky, because when he's flowing, there is a real flow towards it. And it just feels like he's entering that territory now. But he's coming, entering winning territory. Yeah, the twists and turns in this game has been the highlight for me. Just when you think Jenkins is fighting back, then Cumming will hit back. When you think Jenkins is taking the ascendancy, Malcolm goes 140, 140. Fair play to them both. This has been another great encounter. Both around the 90 mark. 60. On the average of stake. 20 darts at a double. Five being it. That could be improved a touch. Well, for Malcolm. And I like the bullseye here, but he's only got the folks on another 140 there. And after nine darts, 121 is exactly what he would have took. 99. Mario Unbelievably Rivera, good last start there. But is it going to be in vain? Treble 17. Would have left the bull for the bull. 97. And he require 170. It's not going to be the big fish for Jenkins this time. And Malcolm, when you get on that stage, all Mario you want is three darts for the match. It's been in the balance. But it's a chance for the Aussie. No score. Not this time. The twists Andy and turns of the game continue to happen. And once again, Jenkins has been presented with an opportunity. Is he going to take advantage? It's going to be a dart again at tops. He's been so good here today. And how leg. many times has he found that top right-hand corner on that particular target when it has been clutch? Seventh and final leg is Mal to throw first. Game on. He has been so proficient on that particular target. And Mal Cumming, who's had darts for a 3-0 lead, 99. has had the opportunity to finish this game off 4-2. May well see this match slip from beneath these fingers. He may see the rug pull from beneath the carpet. The theme of today has been the ups and the downs, the real seesaw battles, classic match play. And this game has had it all. 84. Just when you think someone's taking control, the opponent comes back fighting. People have had darts for the match. And big finishes from the opponent. It's had everything. Who is going to dip? At that finishing post. Again, it's coming. Who's going to be, you think, first to finish? And this Jenkins in here to 140. He put himself in the 100. range. 100. Quicker than his opponent. But for all of his scoring power in this game, he hasn't been able to harbor the opportunities. Three out of four team, and it's came to the doubles. But is that a timely slip? And look at how Jenkins is opening the door. Timing like a Swiss watch. It's had everything this match. Andy for the first 8. time, Andy Jenkins for the match for his first two points. Game. What Shot. a game. And a match. Andy what Jenkins. a performance. What a stunning double it was for Andy Jenkins. Has he put pay to the chances of Mal coming? Thoroughly enjoyed that match. Just over 90 average for Andy Jenkins. Nothing between them. Hit at everything. Back after the break, it's the return of John Desborough against Scott Walters.
Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Good afternoon, welcome along to the Modus Super Series live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Now we are deep in Group C and over on the YouTube channel we've played the first six matches of the day so far. Glenn Durant's been commentating on them and will be for the rest of the afternoon with Henry Deacon and here are those results and the order of play for the rest of the session. Andy Jenkins has come into this group Glenn and he's trying to act as a bit of a spoiler. The last match there 4-3 win over Malcolm in that damages his chances. It does an half, and yeah, that, that's the role he's got to play now. Um, and Malcolm will be sick as a chip because at times they had real opportunities, three darts to, to win the match. Uh, yeah, it's just a very, very interesting fight for second place right now. Yeah, a couple of, play, couple of points between all the players. Dom Taylor winning both of his matches. I mean, he's got one foot in, maybe two feet in finals now. Yeah, just the fact that he's top, but I'd, I'd also say play of the week so far. Some of his averages have been absolutely sublime, and uh, I like everything about him. Yesterday, it was just a case of him beating the players in front of him. Today, he's demonstrating the qualities of big scoring, good finishing, reflected in the averages as well. He is the real deal. Yeah, looking like he's going to get there. Let's have a look at that battle for second place, though as we see the Group C table. You can see Sven Radonk on there at the bottom. He did play earlier in the week, and Andy Jenkins has come in as his replacement, if that confuses anybody. Uh, but Scott Walters, Mal coming on six. Mark Burley on Jed... John Desmarais on eight. This is going to be some fight to the finish. Yeah, Scott Walters probably thought his opportunity's gone, so no more mistakes to come from Scott Walters. has got to be the order of the day for him, but there was a game between John Desmarais and Mark Borelli, and it was a tough watch. Uh, it just could be so vital as well that Borelli got over the line. It is going to be a fantastic finale, but Dom Taylor's riding high. And this must feel like do or die. The first match of this next batch is going to be Walters against Desmarais. If Desmarais wins it, he's on 10 points, leaving Walters four behind. Desmarais has been in a good position the past couple of games and he sort of tightened up a little bit. Uh, Scott Walters hasn't been anywhere near his best. It's time for him to be counted. Now, every game that's going to be playing for the rest of the day has got connotations and excitement and you've got Andy Jenkins playing that little bit of a spoiler role as well. I'm loving it down there. Well, you better get back down there. If Walters does win this one, he does go on to eight points. There's a feeling of a, if he wins it, it kind of is right in the mix. If he loses it, he's probably out. So let's get it on. Glenn is going to join Henry Deacon to talk you through it. Thank you very much, Chris. Hello, everyone. Once again here to the Modus Super Series. We return to the action with Game 7 and we enter 
at a very crucial juncture, a very crucial point in terms of the group because, well, Andy Jenkins is causing a little bit of carnage, isn't he? The man who has come in, picking up victory in his last game, may have just scuppered the hopes of Mal Cummins, but may have opened up the door for John Desimo because a victory here will move him on to 10 points if we saw on the table, while Scott Walters, well, make the carnage ensue even more if he can pick up the two points because we're going to need abacuses and everything to work out the conclusion to this particular Group C campaign should be good fun should be a good ride First and i hope you can John join us throughout the course of the afternoon on. the man in the middle is justin bradshaw and the man next to me in the commentary box the three-time lakeside champ the premier league winner the all-round legend 59. glenn durant you are so kind my best friend what an exciting finale we've got to this group c and the kind of games you're seeing now is these players from second place 100. to fifth place all fighting and searching you've got to feel that dom taylor is going to run away with this because everything he's been done has been with class with humility with 57. real desire to succeed he's been super super impressive and don't be surprised come saturday night if dom taylor's lifting that check because he has been excellent but what it does 60. mean he's got this gaggle of players in the middle all fighting for second place and this in sporting terms, is a classic four-pointer. 93. I suppose the big question we are asking is what type of John Desimo are we going to see here? Because in his first game, 100. average 89.34 was very impressive against Andy Jenkins. And then it's kind of been the trend that we spotted this week with John. That from game one to game two, the average just 41. dips. And it was another dip. This time by 17 points from game one to game two against Mark Burrilli. Not helped by the fact he missed 23 darts a double 80. in a 4-3 defeat to the Scot. Yeah, sometimes my vocabulary lets me down, but it was pretty rubbish. I can't think of real better words than that. Was just, but it, you know, you've got to understand that when you're playing darts you require 161. and it's a big game, you know, that's when tension and that creeps in. That's when your arm doesn't feel like it belongs to you. It's when your legs are shaking because you're, you're thinking maybe of the prize 60. afterwards there. So you've got to maybe John forgive them. What's really important, as John Desmero learned from that defeat, as Mark Borelli learned from that win, like I said, we're going to see twists and turns 60. for the rest of the day. Scott, you require 101. So just sit back and enjoy it with us. 44 left. So it's either a 4 or a 12. He has changed his mind a couple of times. And I think he did there too. A double 16. Game and that's shot the Scott the Walters. Scott Walters. I know and love Scott Walters going into Group C. Was the 5-6 to six favourite to top the group. And he's Second been struggling lane, since. Without, first, didn't play too bad on. yesterday. Maybe didn't get the rewards some of his play deserved. And he struggled again today. What didn't come out the traps as well as he wanted, albeit winning his first game against Mal Cumming. But then a really disappointing loss to Dom Taylor, albeit the fact that Dom just looks a class above everyone. So you feel it's a huge game for Walters here. And if you can get past Desmero, he is right back in the mix. 60. Well, he's the only player in this group Caveat out Andy Jenkins because he's only played a couple of games. He hasn't averaged below 80 yet. 55. That's how well he's played, but he's run into opponents when they've played their best. Yeah, he has the type of qualities as well where you can play well 100. against him. He's quick. And he's virtually throwing his first dart as John's getting his last dart out. And this is where his quality. Expect a max here. Just has a double look there. Maybe he doesn't like the lie of that second one. He doesn't want to bounce out, but he's such a prolific 180 hitter. He wants to do that. And he's plonked there in the upper echelon of that treble 20 bed there with real aplomb. An authoritative dart. 55. He's got all the authority in this game. He's got all the time in the world, you think, from 146. And that 110. is set up play of the highest quality after disastrous first dart. Is the tie turning for Scott Walters? And is John Desmond just beginning to show signs of fatigue? This Scott, is his fifth day on the spin of playing darts. Game shot in the second leg. Scott, Scott Walters. Walters is beginning to fly. A lovely 97 average at the moment and a stunning 13 darter. 
John Desmarot is Third running backwards. John throw first, game on. Killer B look a little bit flat. 100. Needs to inject a bit of a spark here because Scott Walters is continuing to motor. The game is showing up, but it's oh so crucial matchup. On the back of his shirt, it says, floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. But right now, he's wading 36. in water. And it's a tough watch for John Desmarot. He keeps looking up at Sven Verdonk, who's still upstairs in the balcony area there. But he's not getting anything coming back 96. from him now because I think that Borelli loss is really hit. He's still in prime position right now. But I wouldn't make him favourite to finish second. Trying to give him some hope, but 68. his average of a dip so far from where he's been since Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's concerning moments, worrying moments for John Desmarot as the 180 man is flinging him off the ceilings. Oh, what a feeling when you're darting from the ceiling. 43. Scott, you require 86. Double 18. This is beautiful right now. The double eight. Game shot in the third leg. What a Scott difference Walters. a match makes. Because Scott Walters has been through the ringer a little bit this week. He was made favourite because he's absolute leg, quality. To throw first. Game on. He saves his best darts for the Motor Super Series. He's doing a lot of travelling now. He's doing a lot of WDF stuff. He's just away last week at the Cypress Masters, Cypress Open, where once again he lost in his eight. dreaded semi-final. He's uh, really struggling to get over that in many competitions. But he's in good nick. I found himself 60. in the lower part of the group. He's just beginning to just go from third gear to fourth with the occasional fifth gear. The afterburners are on, Henry. Well, in his previous game, he was 81. praying to the gaieties up high. But this has been a match made in the heavens so far for Scott Walters. Averaging a hundred and a half. Three out of four on the doubles, 45. a 101 finish as well. This has been as good as we've seen from him all week, when it's mattered most. And with the feeling of bias as 81. well, you want a Scott Walters, you want a Robert Thornton, you want a Dom Turley, you want a Mike Warburton now on Saturday night because it warms the heart of the cockles when you say them names for Saturday night, doesn't it? 55. Walters, who will bring a... Local affair with him if he makes his way through to tomorrow night's final. 59. 83. Two, two, two. Six darts, he's thinking. And I tell you what, with that first dart, he just loves it in that bottom part of the treble 20 bed. Surely. 104. He'll take that, though. This is a wonderful, wonderful performance from Scott Walters. And it looks as shell-shocked John Desmarot as Scott, he takes his darts 82. out. Scott Walters will look at the bullseye. The two darts at double 16. He's already hit this already. An Game absolute shot. demolition and job Scott from Scott Walters. Walters. His campaign is finally up and running. He sticks his head above the parapet and says, I want that second place. And look at the stat there, 98.56. Fantastic on the outer ring. Scott Walters, that is your A game. And next up, it's Dom Taylor against Malcolm. In.
Well, Glenn Durant was saying how big a game that was going to be for Scott Walters before the break there, and he won it emphatically 4-0 against John Desmer, who actually catapulting himself from fifth to second in this group as one of the three players tied on eight points. But the man at the top of the table is Dom Taylor. He's well clear on 12 and is just looking to cruise towards that chequered flag now. He faces Mal Cumming, who is on six himself, so needs a win, really, to stay in that race and to talk you through every twist and turn it's henry deacon and glenn durant yeah thank you so much chris for that analysis exactly spot on and if you're just watching us here on sporty stuff and you're seeing dom taylor for the first time honestly he is the real deal he is oozes quality and he's got absolutely everything the most beautiful relaxed throw a real good temperament about him a giant of a man but throws a dart absolutely. He caresses that dart. And just look at the way that arm follows through the board against the big Aussie Malcolm, who's had his opportunities. The problem, he just hasn't really grabbed him with both hands. And he'd be very disappointed with the loss against Andy Jenkins uh, and, and lost first early doors against Scott Walters as well. His campaign's on. got to get back on track. But the one person you don't want to see up against you right now is this guy. He was absolutely flying, Henry. Well, the Mound Mountain, that is Dom Taylor, has left an Everest-like task for the rest of the field to try and catch him now. Putting himself onto 12 points in the group. And you can see that Scott Walters has now also moved on to eight points. He's actually opened up a four-point cushion pretty much on the rest of the field now. And so... It's oh so almost there. Yeah, I'm sure with Jeremy Fags back at the hotel watching as well for his Aussie comp compatriot to get there on Saturday night. It would be great to see the two Aussies in the final. 120. And maybe, just maybe, Mal can relax in this one. All of a sudden, he knows he's the underdog. He's had a couple of opportunities today where he could really cement that second place and really make a statement to be there. 85. He's not expected to win this game. This is the stage where Dom Taylor can now guarantee his place on Saturday night. 100. So you know he's totally focused and trying to do exactly that. Now Dom has had a bit of a break because his last game was the 4-2 win against Scott Walters. 45. That was in match four. Now you require 100. Since then we saw Beryl against Desimo. Coming his drinks. Then we had that little bit of a break before joining you on Sporty Stuff TV. So it's been a little while since he's been 100. on the stage. Now he's on 100. This is better from the Aussie, and it will be a break of throat. All the talk's been about this guy in your picture. 60. Mal, you require 40. And maybe we overlook Mal coming for this game. Game shot in the first leg. It won't Mal be for much longer. 1-0 lead, 14 data. You know what I've learned about the Morda Super Series, Henry? Never assume. Second leg, it's Mal to throw first. Game on. I pretty much already wrote on my score sheet here that Dom Till will be going at the 14 points, but this is the time 16. for Mal coming to shine. There's nothing in this battle for second place. Even just a little bit of magic. And they're all playing each other as well. Mark Borelli's up next against the potential spoiler of the pack, Andy Jenkins. 100. Will you be seeing on Sporty Stuff for the first time this week? 100. We're with you for the remainder of today's session. And we're back to uh, tonight for the conclusion of Group B, which sees Robert Thornton. At the top of the table, three from five going through to join Mike Warburton in Saturday night's final. We begin that at half past seven on the Super Series YouTube channel before joining you on Sporty Stuff TV from 10 o'clock for the semi-final and final to see who's going to join Danny Lowby in Champions Week. There is going to be a crowd in tomorrow night to see that affair. Fundamentally sound. It's Dom Taylor. I'd love to know if he's practicing hard behind the scenes because it's great to have the talent. 137. Has he got the work? Dom has he got the desire? Does he want to reach the top? 
But there's so many good young players in the in the world of dart right now. Frightening. The riches are magnificent. Now you require But the hard work starts. What nobody sees. That was a big moment for Malcolm, and that could have been a real statement. Albeit, that's a good re response with a second dart. 80. Just gives Don't him a little sniff and 80. says to Dom, if you miss this 80, you're going 2 0 down, boy. Tops for the tower. 60. Now, now it's the time for 62. Malcolm in to shine. Treble 10. So he's going to get one dart to double. He chooses tops. Big moments in this match. 22. And once again, just comes up a little short. Dom, you require 20. And that could just be the conclusion of his couple of weeks here in England. Don't present this man Game shot with more than end. one opportunity and expect to get away with it. Dom Taylor levels up at one apiece and... This has been uncharacteristically low as far as Third he's concerned, an 85.65 average. His final game yesterday, 100.91, 103. His first game today, complemented with a 96 in his second game. 60. He's got everything. But you don't put all your eggs in one basket in Group C. It's really important to pay, I always, I always like the Mike Gillett story. Very similar to Danny Lauby as well last week where... You know, they didn't shine too much in the group phase, but saved their best to last. As you see the darts, the angle of entry of these darts going in are telling me he is feeling great. The timing of his throw is absolutely perfect. His setup that he has, a lot smaller flight than Mal coming, so you can see the target is actually aiming for. This is the eye line that you see. Look at this. It's, we've come to it absolutely perfect. After the 180... Leave this camera angle, he's asking. Don't change the camera angle, he's begging. We're going to have to. He's on a finish after nine. 45. He's on for a potential 11 dart Don't leg. And after a slow start, he's now reaching stratospheric levels. Doesn't even have to contemplate the balls. I may go treble 10. Should stay there. 49. Just a lovely leg of darts. And a dart away for a 13 data. Just says there's so much about him that he can just go through Don't the gears in such enigmatic fashion. Double 16. Game shot in the third If you have aspirations Don't to be a real top dart player, you need levels in this game. And Dom Taylor, all he did there, just a couple of 180s, just to sit here opponent. To throw first. Game there on. you go. That's what that's what I look like with a bit of turbo boost on. So there's plenty in the tank, but I'm saving a lot of that for Saturday night. I'm just going to get over the line here, Mal. And watch me go on Saturday night. Very, very impressive. 14 points. The golden 14 points for Group C. 92. Not that far away. Ninety-six. Nice to, nice to see Dimitri win in the Premier League last night. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Stato, but I think every player in the Premier League won a week now. Yeah, very competitive field in the Premier League this year. Finals to take place at the 2 next week. And, well, the only good players win the Premier League, don't they? Like I said, I'm going to say to them, I'm going to message all for them and say, you win it. And in three years' time, you could be sat next to Henry Deegan here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Is that why Chris Doby decided not to qualify for the playoffs? 95. I did tell him working where he was hard work, you know, so maybe that was the case. We've spoken an awful lot about Dom Taylor. And Malcolm is just quietly but effectively getting on with his job. And it's looking good for 2-2. Two -two. And it's just with throw. The most difficult thing for Mal coming right now is trying to break this man. Because his Mal best ask today is when he's had the throw. There's something about when he's on 5 or one apiece while he clicks into gear. Everyone, it's double four, Mal. Game shot in the fourth leg. Mal coming. It's 2-2. Two -two. This is where Dom Till has been shining this week. There'll be no panic setting. 
fish just nuggets something about his first. focus when he has the darts, which usually means 45 after I've built it up. Well, there's 20 of them. And another 20 of them. Big five coming. 100. You are demand dump. And a good dart as well when you consider where the first two were precariously poised. 81. That's the only problem with Mal. I think his finishing, he, he will look, well, I think when he assesses his couple of weeks here, I think he can say his finishing could be better. And he is prone to a slack five or a slack one, especially when he's in the treble 20 100. bed like he was there. There's just a couple of elements of his game where you can look back, you can self-reflect. Look at the positives. Look at the negatives. 100. Because he's not a million miles. A very solid throw. He's a big guy and he uses that. They're both very big guys. And they're maximising the strengths and their positives. But 137. Yeah, sure. I'm not part of the family of Dom Taylor, but I've just got to. I'll, I'll praise any player. I'll criticise where I can. Constructively. 180. This is warming Dom, up very, very nicely. They're bringing the best out of each other. 132. Mal, you require 140. 140 for free two in the break of throw. And Taylor's going to return for 13 dart leg. 120. Put himself on the brink. Dom, you require 32. In more ways than one. Game shot in the fifth leg. Exquisite. Once again, on throw. 13 data, meaning you, your opponent has to win in 12 darts. Six which leg is, is Mal very, Jabra very first. tough. Game on. Even for the very elite in the game. Game of the day so far. 100. Brilliant. Jenkins to come after this. Sixty. So, as far as the league table is concerned, then a win for Dom Taylor put him on to fourteen. Desimo is on eight. Ninety-five. Played eight. And then Malcolm would be on six after eight. Mappa really would be on eight, but he would have played seven. Scott Walters would be on eight points, having also played eight. And of course, Jenkins coming in to fill the allotment would be on two. The biggest game of the week coming up for Mark Borelli. He come through a real stinker of a match against John Desborough. 98. But he's had a long time to reflect on that game. And a win over Jenkins next could have major connotations in him qualifying for the group. 56. Yeah, if there's one area Dom, Dom can improve on, it's definitely against the darts. It doesn't look like the same, but it'd be interesting to see his stats this week. When he's 180. got the darts. 180. The fourth 180 of this match. Super competitive game, this. And it's looking like it's going all the way. 140. Man so, 214s. Or 13. And this high quality affair is going to get the crescendo it may coming. well deserve. It's one leg. One crucial leg. One vital leg. Seven final Group spinning leg. leg. To throw first. Game on. Possibly a job done leg for Don Taylor. His compatriot Jeremy Fagg was involved in a lot of 4-3s last night. 98. Mal Cummins on the back of a 4-3 loss the previous game. And is this going to be the defining factor? Because he has 100. to break Dom Taylor to win this game. And People have struggled to do that this week. It's now just a 4 one single leg game now. This is where the word bottle comes into it. What minerals you have between the ears. And Don Taylor has shown that he's got that in abundances. Well, both players in their biggest game of the week have been treating us 60. to some of their best arrows, that is for sure. We see a bit of board management here on 263, the 19s, even the 18s if he wanted to. He feels like that's a good mark and it just kiss on top. And the nod of appreciation tells you he's got total control of this leg. 
and even a maximum here. We're still left Dom a big favourite. Dom, you require 160. Taylor's to lose some here. Has he got the power? Thirty-nine. A glimmer of hope as Andrew Gildin walks into the building. Uh, One hundred twenty-eight points away. 60. Dom Taylor from tomorrow night's final. A win Dom is good enough. One hundred twenty-eight. Yeah, six darts on one to eight. You have to fancy him, Henry. I think that was a chance there from Malcolm. But coming up dry on the treble twenty bed again. Has done him no favors. Very sensibly, he's just laying up. You can only lay up if you hit the treble 20. That's exactly what he's did. Excellent experience. Good board management. You've given yourself the opportunity, Dom Taylor. This is for qualification for Saturday night. 131. The standalone player in this group. And this is to seal his place in tomorrow night's final. Game. And Dom. Sure is the Dom when it comes to Group C. And that fist there tells you he's through. That celebration tells you he's through. Okay, and the better with the ball now coming in a last leg decider. A hugely impressive match. 95 and 97 the averages, really good doubles percentages and a split of the 180s, two apiece. Really good game, really good contest. We're off for a break and we're going to see Jenkins Burini on the other side of it. Confirmation then that Dom Taylor is through to finals night. Joining Mike Warburton, the Group A winner, and whoever finishes second in this group. So attention now turns to that race, and Mark Barilli could move into pole position in it. He could be the first to 10 points out of the remaining players fighting it out. And this is the point of the group where all of the others really want Andy Jenkins to start doing them favours. Let's see if he obliges in this battle with Barilli. Henry Deacon and Glenn Durrant will guide you through it. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Just have a feeling for Marbury. This is his biggest game of the week. He's on the back of a 4-3 win. 
which he won't want to remember. It was a shocker of a game between himself Firstly, and John Desmond, but more importantly, he got the two on. points. Andy Jenkins is now playing that role of a spoiler. He looks determined just with that first dart alone. If you're going to beat me, maybe just what Borelli needs. I think Borelli needs to bounce off players as well. I think when he gets embroiled in a in a slow game, 69. he struggles a little bit, which Jenkins out the traps. There was a second there where I thought this would be one of the craziest nine darters of all time if Andy Jenkins gets one today. Because he wasn't meant to be here. Fifty-eight. And as Merce said up on the balcony, he's basically everybody's 31. friend bar Mark Barilli. They all want him to win. Because it is Barilli, really, who's in, in the box seat just by virtue of having a game in hand. Fifty-six. Four times they've met each other previously. Is this any indication? It's a 100% win for Andy Jenkins on the Challenge 2 in 2019, a Players' Championship in 2014. And do you require 140? And Players' Championships in 2017, all big wins for Andy Jenkins. 60. I wonder if that was on the mind at all. Despite the fact it's many years since they played each other, I had a feeling when the way they were chatting and laughing and on that stage there, they crossed paths before. I don't think there's a darts player in the world Andy Jenkins doesn't know, and vice versa. 14. He is himself on top, so Barilli all the way back on 2 3 7. And, well, we haven't seen him since that game against. John Desimo, he won 4-3, but it was that real slugfest, wasn't it, in the middle of our programme of games. And Game shot well, it's been a slow lane. start Andy to this Jenkins. one, and Jenkins takes full advantage to lead 1-0. Yeah, but it's been a case of no two games have been the same this week, so Second part of me was thinking Borelli game on. could bring that game that produced 109 average in his open game yesterday away. was 53. absolutely sensational, and he needs one of them right now. Someone just needs to grasp that second place. The twist and fifty nine. I just can't take my eyes off Scott Walters as name. He's never really been involved in it, and all of a sudden now he's just beginning to peck up, and he's gone from fifth to third, and he's just creeping closer and closer. Seventy nine into that second place, where he now sits. Well, it's the fact that it's so tight because Walter's on 8-0 legs difference. Barilli's on 8-0 leg difference. It's going down to legs one of the minute, which Scott Walters narrowly has. Desimo is on eight points himself. Minus two in the legs difference column. Yeah, Dom Taylor could really 65. dent the chances of John Desimo. That game's up next. Just looking further down, Scott Walters against Andy Jenkins to come. 86. Well coming, Mark Borelli. There's a four-pointer. All still to play for. And look at that final game of the day. Mark Borelli against Scott Walters. 180. Mark, you require 150. 88. Andy require 97. Big moments. 88, so either treble 20 or treble 16, just however he feels. I bet he's wishing now he went treble 16. 27. But the Mark easier moments, Mark Morelli. He's been on the hockey note for five days. Two darts a double 16. Oh, dear. Yeah, the shake of the head tells you everything. 54, and he requires 70. The only saving grace of Borelli has left that double four, which has a magnet inside. Is he going to get a chance? It's one dart on the floor, but he's entitled to throw it still. It's double 16. This is huge. 54. Both myself Mark and Henry requirement. look at each other. I think we realise the importance of that dart there, but that's wild. Mark Brain needs to get his composure together. Game shot on the second what leg. a Mark dart Barry. that is. He's come through a bit of a, a rubbish game from his standards, and he'd be absolutely delighted. 
Are the gods? Third and Mark Borelli side to it. Game on. Will it be the case of darting demons or darting delights for Mark Borelli? 84. He's enjoyed every second of this, Andy Jenkins, isn't he? I bet he's wishes he won this first game because he could be right in the mix. 36. He could have been sat on six points with a win here. And we're starting to look at Andy Jenkins. Like I said, what a story. I'd be telling a lie if that's not what a couple of people in the comms box wanted. Because the Morda Super Siege did produce some fantastic stories. I think that could have topped the lot. I think Chris 100. Mason would disagree, Mike. Yeah, that was brilliant. I think that's the first time I sat at home and never missed it. I thought that whole Legends Week as well. I mean, it's fantastic to have the ADC Europe, ADC Oceania, but you know, there's other ideas that were always shotting out there to people. 100. And that Legends Week, a, a women's series. There's loads and loads of ideas out there. So that's where we like. If you can get in involved with anything on social media, please add. MSS Dart, that does a 180. Let me know your thoughts. We're getting to a real f exciting finale here. 140. Who is going to get that second place? Fat 20. Tops. Game what shot in the finish. third leg. What a dart. Does it mean anything to Andy Jenkins? We'll see that little fist pump at the end as that tops went in. I think that tells you. Fourth leg is Mark to throw first. Game on. And how came was Mark Barilli there to get to the hockey where he's kind of been like an eager beaver all week hasn't he 100 yeah he's done that even when it's not his turn to throw first well he actually started to throw it against John Decimo in that previous game he was that ready to go yeah one of the few players who wears a jumper I'm not going to show people just watching those on sporty stuff for the first time this is something he's done for 20 30 years on the circuit ever since I First time round about 2,000 it was the first time I saw Mark Borelli in Bridlington for the British Open in the BDO days. Have you ever played dart in a jumper? I haven't, no. I'm, I'm, I'm 58. I suppose, actually, no, tell a lie. No, I, 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 as you can tell when I sometimes present, I do like the old um, seventy-eight long sleeve. Polo number, so actually, yeah, I, I am lying to you. Just a yes or a no is fine, Henry. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> 100. Who's going to get that second place, Henry? 96. I'm going to go Scott Mark Walters from absolutely nowhere. He's looking the most likely, isn't he, today? Um, and look, the performances yesterday, he was unlucky to only get the four. And he's making and up for it and then some today. But can Jenkins and a haymaker 142? Not this time, but he's going to try and leave it handily. One hundred and ten. Mark, you require one hundred and eighteen. Yeah, that will hurt when you're so aggressive on that treble 20 and it slides into the five. 82. And all you can Andy do now is hope rather than expectation as Jenkins heads for double 16. Mark Borelli won't be watching because this is huge, this start. 16. Wowza. Mark, you require 36. And so when opportunity knocks, when opportunity knocks, 18. The door is slammed shut. And do you require 16? I don't think he'll be back. Game shot on the fourth club in the middle, but Marpre's only got himself to blame. You can't shake your head to get an opportunity like that. And I'm disappointed for Mark. He's like I said, he's been a tough week Fifth for him. Then I saw his first. and his Game brilliant on. best yesterday. And part of me is trying to throw his dart away there, but it's it's tough up there. He's a class act. Forty two. But right now he just his form's deserted him at the wrong time. And there are so many gleaming signs of promise. Kicked off the group with 109.31 average. Kicked off today, even though it was in a losing effort to Dom Taylor, with 91.18. But I think his story is quite similar to John Desimo's in the 
respect that there's been so many so promising signs, six. but he hasn't been able to keep that consistent line going. And, and, and because of that, that's why he may well be dragged into the position that he's in. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, and I, I know that consistency is not his forte. He is one of them ones 41. where you can get a 110 average, you can get a 70 average, and he's demonstrated that. But at times when he was needed most, i.e. that double 18 nice, trying to find that concentration level there, he's trying everything he possibly can. Early on, he was trying to slow that first dart down. But this is much better. 125, and he requires 141. Looks like only one winner right now. Could do have a treble, though. Doesn't come, and so Barilli is back for 1 2 8 to bring it back to 3 2. Triple. And the ball for Barilli. What would have been a Hail Mary? Do you require 100? At the same time yesterday, he did exactly that, and he smacked it in the ball. Two darts for Jenkins. It's spoiler Shot. alert here at the Live Andy Lounge in Jenkins. Portsmouth as Andy Jenkins smashes in a 4-1 with that lovely 100 finish for Mark Morelli. So near yet so far. His form has just deserted him at the wrong time. The highlight being that 100 finish at the end. Andy Jenkins is just beginning to find his form. Even a sense of frustration that he lost his opening game today, but he's playing an excellent role in this very competitive Group C. Next up, the top of the table, Dom Taylor against John Desmoreau. So Andy Jenkins indeed playing spoiler on his day in Group C. He can't get through, however. It is beyond the realm of possibility for Andy Jenkins to make it into the top two. But the other players are battling it out to join Dom Taylor, who's already qualified from this group. One of them is John Desrimo. He is currently on eight points, along with Scott Walters and Mark Barilli. So we'll be looking to steal a march on that pair. But he has got the toughest of tough tasks, only one defeat for Taylor so far in this group. Can Desrimo inflict another? Let's find out in the company of Henry and Glenn. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. And it's a downward spiral that concerns me for the man in your picture there, John Desmoreau. A 4-3 defeat to Mark Borelli and a 4-0 defeat to Scott Walters being his last two games. 
consistency was beginning to be a real positive for John Desmarais. At the beginning of the week, after his first 10 games, he'd lost seven of them. Second part of the week, played 10, won seven. And we're sort of coming into this one as just the quiet person where we weren't talking a great deal about first him. Leg is dumb to and he could have really secured second place, even by now with the, that win over such a disappointing game against Borelli. And what happens is when you really need two points, you step up against the top of the table, Don Taylor, who feels he can just throw them off the lampshades at the moment. Well, he has been throwing them off the lampshades at times today. Kicked off 103 and a half, a 147 to finish. And then in his previous encounters before that, a 96. His, his lowest average of the day is a 95.85. That's the levels he's playing at. That's professional levels, you know, 60. let's be honest with you. That, that's what his aspiration should be now. But there's so many talented young players out there. It's how you apply yourself from now. It's how 60. your preparation is. It's how dedicated you are. There's so much more to being a dar player now. It's a very rewarding sport, but it ain't easy. And talent's not everything. 99. And the cynics would say... It's all right producing this stuff when you're playing well and things are going for you, but then what's going to happen 96. when you're back against the wall and things begin to struggle a little bit? Oh, Henry, you cynic. I know, right? You're getting so controversial lately, you. I know. These, well, these splinters ain't nice, put it that way. 38. And what I would say to Dom is everything's gone right for you. And just humility is really important. And just if things aren't going right so well, just don't show too much to your opponent. We're looking at the finer parts to make him the more all-round player. And it's great when you're watching him do this. It's lovely. You're going to have a smile on your face, a bounce in your step. But when things aren't going so well, waving the hands, the stare at the board, I think that's where he can then just take a, a little stride forward. 100. Dom, you require 104. Options now, 16s, 20s, or 18s. Or 19s. Cheers, Dom. Welcome to Modern Darts. Any which route is possible. Well, there's only going to be one route that Desimo's going to be going for this 60. It's all about the 20 and tops. But break a throw and a 1 0 lead. Oh, wow. 19 for tops. There's only going to be one in hand. But when he stands back, they go in. 20. Dom, you require 46. Do you think that sums up his day so far, Henry? I think so. He's looking up again to Sven. 1 left. Game How good has he been on double 18 this Taylor. weekend? It was a 21 data, a real sign of frustration from Dom Taylor because he knows the levels of a cheek can accrue in game, but he leaves Second Desimo all the same the by a oh. leg to nil. Yeah, motivation's the one thing for Dom. He knows he's there Saturday night now. Job done. Is the fact getting to 18 points a big enough motivation 16. for him to still kick on? Is the fact that he's playing players where other players are depending on him playing well? You've just got to find that inner motivation yourself set yourself individual targets just think right i'm going to improve on this in this 100. game 100 there again don't over over analyze anything he's probably thinking and just thinking let's just get to that winning post well at this point he's reaching the ticking over process because he knows he's going through he's got a couple more games to go don't lose the form now when it matters the most because he's going to need it tomorrow night it's going to be a high quality field no matter what happens you know mike warburton's going to be there robert thornton got a foot in the finals tomorrow night after his opening night flurry. Yeah, if you add Chad Barstow in and if you add Scott Walters, it has a real local feeling as well. 59. Yeah, Chaz, I mean, we were probably a little bit too critical on Chaz Barstow last night. I puke, I, honestly, it was because of a compliment because I rate him so highly that him not 92. banging 100 averages and every time he goes on the dartboard is sort of new to me. Yeah, it could be rammed in here tomorrow night. So if you want to be here, do scan that QR code on the screen. 42. Dartshot.tv, the place to be. Tickets are every single week at the Super Series event. And it is a unique experience. It's it's different to most other events. You're really up close, personal 
with the players. You've got a real bird's eye view of all of the action. Downstairs. 101. He did the right thing there, but the funny part of it there is he's still left a bogey. Bogeys for Dom. All we need now is Dick. 49. Was it Dick and Dom in the bungalow or something like in that? In the right? bungalow, yeah. yeah. I still prefer Rainbow. So, the big fish for the killer bee. Is it to be? It's not to be. That was the question. 55. Dom, you require 82. So, 82 for 2-0. Excellent bullseye. Game Just shot in the second leg. Absolutely sweet Taylor. as a nut. Two reasons why they were so sweet. When you're top of the table, things like that just happen. When you're John Desmond and that tightness is in first. your arm, you're thinking of the point. He continues to look up to his friend. At the moment, the game just looks ridiculously easy for Dom Taylor. And people around him, friends and family are watching now. 60. Just remind him it's that focus that he needs for Saturday night because he has them gears as well. It's not like consistency is getting him through. He's been the big average hitter. He's got a real A game. He's demonstrated here he's winning ugly. I mean, he's averaging just shy of 80 in this one, which is well below his, what, his capabilities. But part of me likes the fact that I'm seeing this from him. He's not a one-trick pony. If he doesn't batter you, he can still win games. He could be there Saturday night and lifting that check without a shadow of a doubt. And sometimes you don't have to be vintage to win big games. Look at Danny Lau being that 57. final last week against Wesley Harms. It wasn't a high-quality affair. He openly admitted that Danny Lau be in the interview after that final. But when it matters the most, you need to find something that's good enough in the big enough 96. situation. And I think this could be a glaring example of that here for Dom Taylor. And in fairness, he's just beginning to up that level. 99. He's now moving in towards the 83 mark now from a range of around about 77, 78. Yeah, I'm not back now until week 11 and week 12 of this series. But I won't forget series two and that the winner was part of being the commentary team. You feel like you get to know the players an awful 60. lot. And if Dom Taylor is successful this week, he'll be in there when asked who I think will do well in Champions Week in August. He'll be in there and that 60. sticks out to me. Dom, you require We're going to do that me for 10 weeks. We'll message each other, don't worry. I might give you some abuse on social media anyway. We go over now to Chris and Matt. And I haven't forgot that yet. 59. But I can score it or miss or nickel. Not Matt. Big fish. Good cod. Oh, yes. John That's what we're talking about. The big fish for John Desmond. He's had a disastrous day. And then it's moments like that. And John Desmond needs to stay focused because sometimes you just need that catalyst. You just need that spark. No better John feeling than the 170. On. He's reeled it in. Now it's time to kick on. He's reeled the fish in, but has he also reeled Don Taylor in at the same time? Because that was a break of throw for Desmond. Don't, don't panic, John. How many times do we see this, Glenn, when a player does something magical to claw themselves back in the game and get a break of throw and come up dry? Can I tell you my theory? Because he started laughing and talking away 100. to Dom. 100. Get your darts out, stay focused, have a sip of your drink, and keep that fire in your belly. 47. When you, when you start fist pumping and laughing with someone, you lose that intensity. That's my theory anyway. Something happened in that last visit I want to talk about. He started down on the 19s. What does that say to you? 83. It's just been a strange old day after pinging two treble 20s. 60. No reason whatsoever. If I've just hit a 170, then I'll be seeing the treble 20 like a bucket. The perfect dart. 
Sometimes you need a treble 20. 140. And you think it's not, a, it's not where he wants to be in that treble 20 bed. That's how good players are in this modern era now. There's certain parts of that treble 20 bed. 100. And Dom Taylor's first dart there, I thought was a guaranteed maxi. You could tell from the facial expressions how much he didn't like that low first dart. Recalibrates back. Scored 38. 58. He's himself on 120 upon his return. Can the tower climb the ladder? 58. I do like Don't when you roll David Brent on me. 20. Can he climb that ladder? Just moves across the hockey just to see that bed. And what I like at this point here... 88 is that <laughs> I would have said just go fat to it. leave yourself a two data don't try and be too greedy with that last dart with your opponent on 197 Dom you require 32 when you're as good as this guy anything is capable and after the big fish from John Desmond he hasn't panicked in fact he's just gone into the, another gear just to beat the opponent which we've seen so many Game times shot on the fourth leg and Dom that Taylor is as sweet as it comes Dom Taylor He's playing absolutely fantastic and looking great for a five out of five today. Fifth leg, it's Dom. And a to serious first. return of Game 18 on. points out of 20. He has absolutely dominated this group. He has given out a decimation of the opposition in this group C. Dom the Dominator. 131. Dominating. 140. It's smooth, isn't it? Look at that. Letting the arm do the work. 137. Keeping that body still. 58. Well, at the beginning of the day you could have got odds of seven to one of dom taylor to win the week as a whole i think those odds are going to come crashing in after today's session 57 yeah he was my tip to win this group i mean i know they made scott walters a big fairer but i just felt there was something about 47. dom taylor you know and the research you do on players and what i know he's part of a stable as well which i was able to ask a couple of questions about him but like I said, he's at that crossroads now. We've waxed lyrical about him all week, but that's just half the battle. Let's see what you're made of. 60. When someone sticks it up him on Saturday night as well, how does he fight? How does he respond? So, 116 to get 60. the job done for Dom Taylor. Dom, you require 116. It's been a case of this group. Don't get done, get Dom. And could he finish off this game with a, another tongue-topping finish? This has been his trademark this week. Finishing off with tongue-toppers. And, and he's done John it again Taylor. here to get the better John Desimo by four legs to one. Finishing it off a 116 checkout, 85 average, four out of six on the doubles. It's another impressive display from Dom Taylor, who continues to dominate this Group C. And if he carries on in this particular vein, you sense he could be the man to beat when it comes to picking up the prize tomorrow night. He beats John Desimo by four legs to one. That could be demolific as far as his chances of progression is concerned. After the break, Scott Walters against Andy Jenkins. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Joe Taylor, Derek Tilly, and more too, Craig Nixon, Robin Young. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back. We're about to start game 11 of Friday's 25, including tonight's 10 from 10. Don't forget to join us then. But in Group C, Andy Jenkins, a late replacement for the injured Sven Verdonk. He's been dishing out destruction, hampering the hopes of both Mark Barilli and Mal Cummings so far. And now he's got Scott Walters in his sights. But a Walters win, and Scott gets a grip on the all-important second place, putting himself in the box seat to progress alongside already crowned group winner Dom Taylor, who has amassed double the amount of points as his closest rival. Right, to talk you through this one, it's Glenn and Henry. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. I'm just talking off there with Henry and saying what a fantastic session it's been today. Obviously highlighted by the Firstly, fact that Scott Dom Taylor's first. flying Ooh. high, but the fight for second place and Andy Jenkins is just playing that role of, well, I'm going to play a part in who comes second. Andy One Jenkins, Matt Barelli had his chance. You feel Mal Malcolm had his chance, but came off dry against Dom Taylor. John Desmond lost his last three. Well, Scott Walters, over to you now. 140. A decent start by both. They'll settle into proceedings. We kind of looked at this when we saw the fixture sheet as soon as this one was completed and we had a look at this and thought this could be really good. Both players who go at a good pace. Walters, as we've mentioned all week, the maximum man in this group. Andy Jenkins, when he gets going, compiling some big numbers himself. Oh, what a start! Two maximums in three visits for Scott Walters! Just the pace, everything about this game is Scott, you require exciting as both in the comms box here. Oh, boring, boring does. I love the two dark combo. That the shot on the first leg. is what Scott it's all Walters. about. We had a 10 darter early in the week. For me, that is the leg of the week because Scott Walters, for the first time, it's a case of. Second leg is You've been in fifth place, first. fourth Amen. place. Do you want second place? Well, we're going to put Andy Jenkins up against you. Let's see how you can do. Well, Mal Cumming couldn't handle it. John Desmarais couldn't 100. handle it. Mark Barelli fell at that fence. Scott Walters, what can you do to say, yes, please, I'll have that second place? Well, hitting 11 darters is a good way to go about it. And then kicks off this leg with a 1 3 4. He hasn't had a scoring visit where it's been troublous yet. It's really important to get Henry excited in the comms box, and I usually just do this. It's at this point, he goes absolutely bananas normally. 120. The only thing that's stopping Scott Walters from hitting maximums is bounce outs. That's nearly a third in the middle of leg 45. two. I'll be getting told off next about putting averages up after one leg, but... It's just an indication of how well these two have come out. Look at the focus on Scott Walters. I don't think I've seen that from him this week. It hasn't 98. been his week. But what's nice about Scott is, yes, he took all applauded. Yes, he's the favourite. 
Yes, but he hits lots of 180s. Well, it didn't really Ooh, go that turned. well for him. Scott, you're Has he ever qualified where he's finished really well? Started slowly in the week and then finished on a real high. Because I am telling you, Dom Taylor, we've talked an awful lot about. 87. This guy can easily go uh, on Saturday night and just produce his A game and sail through it. But Jenkins is doing his job. This is a beautiful game. Scott, you require 62. This is a tungsten treat, a darting delight. But it's only going to be one dart at double, which Scott Walters 30. may get in this leg. His crime, missing 14. double 16 for 15. If Jenkins can convert tops. Game shot in the second leg. Right, Andy in the Jenkins. corner of double 10. I think that's where the wry smile come from Andy Jenkins there. Just remember that dart for Scott Walters. He gets a chance. Third leg is Scott. To one, first. two millimetre difference. Just the other side of the wire. That's how close. Just a little bit of magic here or there could be the difference in this game. But he hasn't let it get him down. And 97 is a perfectly acceptable start in this game. And he doesn't like the lie of that. Looks good enough to me. 133. Where were you yesterday, Andy Jenkins? I don't know. You'd have to go and ask him. 30. One hundred and thirty-four. He's got the timing right. Everything about his throw right now. One hundred and twenty-five. Special, really special game. This eighty-five. Yeah, we've seen a couple of games that have gone between twenty-seven minutes at one point. Rest assured, this is flying. 45, and you require 149. 149 for Jenkins, and he's going to get six on this particular juncture. Walter started off with an 11. Jenkins was looking for a 12, but he's going to set up perfectly to leave double eight after 12 darts. Who is going to get this second place? 40. And he requires 16. Well, Andy Game Jenkins has looked like the form Andy horse Jenkins. right now, but unfortunately, even if he gets to eight points, there's going to be games where players on eight points will be playing each other, so someone will be guaranteed. Fourth leg is Andy to throw first. To get 10 points. Scott Walters will be thinking, well, this is my chance to shine, and I'm walking into a brick wall at the moment. And that brick wall is Andy 140. Jenkins. 140. One hundred. Whatever happens this week, Andy Jenkins can walk away and say 16. his game is there. Is it as consistent as I want it to be? Possibly not. But it's a great feeling to know that there's a hundred and eight, hundred and ten average in in you. Especially with seeing these events coming up soon. Qualifications. One hundred and forty. Scott Walters is going nowhere. He knows the importance of this. Getting to ten points right now. And the fact that Scott Walters' 100. last game, the final game of the day against Mark Borelli, both players currently sat on eight points. We haven't even spoke about Mal Cumming for a while. He's got 41. a huge couple of games coming. Games I think Mal Cumming can win. Mark Borelli and John Desmarot. That would then put him on ten points too. My head is hurting. 95. 100. Doesn't want to go downstairs, but he can have one go at the 20s and one go at the 19s because it'd still leave a 161. But he's been persistent. Dark eight players can be stubborn sometimes. But he had a wide open treble 19 bed that he could have looked at. 68 left. 56. Scott, you require 160. That was the right route. But Walters is the kind of person who hit a 160 because he's so prolific on that treble 20 bed. But that first. That just went a bit 100. short. And do you require 50? Big moments in this match. 
Double 16 for 3 1. With Walters sat poised on Danger 60. On Jenkins player. takes Andy full Jenkins. advantage and he is into a 3 1 lead, averaging 98.84. And when you consider the blistering start Scott that Scott Walters made to this match, an 11 dart to start, Andy Jenkins has hit the ground running ever since. But is this of a post for Scott? Forty. He's another shock. Does his tips two out of two. Eighty-three. What's left on the bill? I need Mark Borelli to get three legs against Scott Walters in the last one. One hundred and twenty-one. There will be betting slips up and down the nation, which will be. Hoping that Dozer's tips comes out correct. 123. They usually do the opposite. But joking aside, remember to gamble responsibly. 18 plus, be gamble aware.org. 84. Andy Scott Jenkins. Yuquois, 155. He's putting a real show on here, but Scott Walters is fighting for treble 19. He's just looking at the situation here because it's such a good marker for him. He could lay up. But 76 left. And this is where, as a dart player, you should know what you want. You just stood behind Andy. If I hit the treble, I'm going to do this. Because them darts took about 20 seconds for a player who takes about six seconds to throw. So have your plan while Scott you stood Yuquan, behind 56. your player. The plan is simple here. It's two darts at tops. Forty. Wow. I've He's laid the gauntlet. I've done it before myself. We had this conversation with Adi here while Chris Murphy yesterday. Scott, you Chris Murphy 16. last night. I've gone four double eight on 20 myself. But is it going to be a tactic he that unravels? He has to Game go for it. In the fifth lane. And what he Scott did, he looked Walters. there because he wanted to bust the score for a second, but one four three. No, thank you. We're still in this game. But Andy Jenkins Six has looked in great form here. And with his dart, you've still got to make Jenks a big, big favourite. And if that didn't go in, Andy 60. Jenkins would have royally eyed up that 1 4 3 on the back of that previous play. Is Walters eyeing up the comeback now? Firing in a max! His third of the game. His first since the first leg. 85. And Jenkins here, has he just hit a little bit of a wobble? Has he hit a bit of a wall here? Walters is going into turbo drive. 100. A new word for the bingo card of Dozer. Gaggle. 97. And one person who said, who, did win, who didn't win a Premier League this year, Peter Wright. I thought he did. I thought everyone won one. 100. Where's the tungsten T-Rex? We'll get nasty here on uh, Twitter. 82. Scott, you require... 1-2-1 one, one for Walters to level this game up at three apiece. He's not... Well, when you consider his previous play, he's not even going to contemplate the bullseye route. He shouldn't. I like that. Uh, 46 left. So just the six of the ten. Keep it simple. If you're feeling super confident, then it's a big 14 to leave you double 16. That's an indication 89. to me that he feels good because the easy option there is to leave either double 18 or tops. Scott Walters has demonstrated the qualities of that tenacity that you need. 95. Scott, you require 32. 39 coming. Game Big dart bounce play. because Scott Jenkins Walters. was laying up 82 for the match and Walters will have the darts in the decider. This has been a high-quality affair. It's been a real enjoyable watch and we are going Seven to get the last leg win. decider first. that this particular battle well and truly deserves. Walters is 501 points away from taking control of second place to get onto that 10 points. 121. 
140. Reminder, coming up after this, we're going to see Mal coming in action. Up against Mark Burrilli. 41. You felt that Scott Walters was in control with that 1-2-1, one, one, but his opponent came back with a 140 in the pressure. 26. Well, after six darts each, Scott Walters, after that return of 41, might be thinking he's up against it, but he still has the darts. What a dart that is. I'd go downstairs on 339. 83. I didn't like that lie. Just a bit of composure from one of these two players now because it's been high quality. 22. And scores of 26 and 22. Has that put pay to the fight of Andy Jenkins? Walters is on a charge. He's the moving man on day two in Group C. 100. He was brimming underneath the surface after the first day. He is putting it to full use here on day two. 85. Scott, you require 156. Another one of them. Leads himself. Double 18 for the match to finish in style. Game. Oh, what Shot. a way and to that. finish Shot for Walters. Scott Walters. A victory which may well help him on his path towards qualification tomorrow night. That was a magnificent encounter. Walters the 4 3 victor with an average just under 94. 4 out of 10 on the doubles and finishing with a flourish. A 1 5 6 check out to the pose of Andy Jenkins. Right, we're going to take a short break upon our return. It is must win territory for Mark Perilli. He takes on Mal Cumming next. Well, it looks like the race for second place and the right to join Dom Taylor in qualifying from Group C for finals night is going to be a straight shootout in the very last match between Mark Burley and Scott Walters. It might not be, however. Burley well, really will feel he has to win this match to get on to 10 points with Walters. If he loses it heavily, that could be that. A 4-0 defeat here would actually eliminate Mark Burley and end the chances of that happening. Any other result, and he's still in ahead of that curtain closer. But if he wins the game, he could actually end up going into it in a position where both players are level on points and leg difference. So a big, big game for a Burley. He takes on Mal Cummin, who is already eliminated the Australian. And Henry Deacon is alongside Glenn Durant in commentary. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Expertly put. 
just to save us getting the abacus out and trying to explain everything. Mark really feels had his chances as well today. And it's just been one of them days for him when he came through that really scrappy game against Desmoreau. And Malcolm has just come up a little bit short. I said to Henry last week, I was like, sorry, as I arrived on Monday, Malcolm, and he said, look, his scoring power is there, Glenn. He just needs to tidy up his finishing, and we'll see him there on Saturday night. Well, once again, you just feel he come up a little bit sh short at very, very important times. So hopefully he sees the positives and negatives Firstly, from the week. Mel to throw first. And the fact Game he will on. be back after this but can still play a major role in what happens in this group. And it's that point when things get serious. 60. What helps Mal coming in this scenario against Burley is he comes into it with a superior legs difference. That's probably the thing that is clinging on to his hopes. 135. Although, here's a little factoid for you, Glenn. I don't know how much you love a good stat. 60. The last three games have all been won with ton or more finishes. Yeah, my favourite one out of them were, was that one five six there. It was from Scott Walters. It was outstanding. Forty four. It was another case of Moda Super Series. It's fantastic. Henry goes ballistic, and then big finishes go in. I'll be honest. I thought you were going to say Henry was atrocious then. <laughs> Just not happening, is it, for Borelli? 85. I would love to see a real curtain raise at the end against Scott Walters. 140. 100. Mal, you require 141. Eighty nine. Mark you require one hundred and thirty seven. Options here, treble twenty or treble nineteen. It's going down. I think that was for treble nineteen. I'm trying to work out what forty eight leaves. Forty two. Now you require fifty two. Be wishing it stayed on the treble twenty bed now. It's two darts. A tops will come in. Game shot in the first leg. Mal coming. That's absolutely clinical. That's the type of area which has possibly let him down the past two weeks. Second leg is marked to throw first. Mal, when he goes back to Australia, they're the kind of finishes he'll be getting back on the board and doing because for me, that's the only difference of him qualifying and not qualifying today. 85. Mark's having some real swingers here. Consistency hasn't been... His forte today. The perfect dar for Borelli. One hundred and fourteen. He's fighting with Sel, doesn't he? On point of release there. Whereas coming just looks ultra relaxed. One hundred. Let's have a little closer look as a point of release here for Mark. Yeah, they're just wild. And then it just doesn't look smooth. That just, 44. I wouldn't say the occasion because Mark Pirelli has played on much bigger stages. You know, he's been at the very top. He's played in massive games, but it just looks like he's One tightened up at the wrong time. And Mal Cullen, the absolute opposite. Mal Cullen just shy of 100 average right now. The muscles are relaxed and he is playing with some freedom. Mal, you require Playing 41. with the... True flair and poise we know that he has in abundances. 
Game and that the tops leg. for Mal an Green. enigmatic 14 data to double his lead to 2 0 and to break Mark Barilli's throw. Third leg is Mal to throw first. Game on. One hundred and thirty-five. So it's getting to a stage now where I've pretty much written off Malcolm and I thought he'd had his chances. But a big win over Borelli here. And a win over Je Desmero. One hundred. Then he'd be looking for a favour off Borelli against Walters. Then we'd be looking at uh, legs difference and all of a sudden he comes back into the equation again. Ninety-five. Well, it's one of those ridiculous scenarios because Walters is on 10 points plus one as things stand. Borelli's on eight points Minus three. Cummings on six points, but crucially for him, plus one when it comes yeah. to legs difference. A win here for Cummings would put him on to eight points. Brilli's last game is against Walters. So Brilli would have to beat Walters. Cummings would have to beat Desimo in the game before. And then you'll have to hope that the leg differential works in his favour to be able to qualify. In one of them weeks, isn't it, where you're getting going down to the final game, the penultimate games. 60. Oh, now you're a Dom Taylor running away with things, but second place is super exciting here. And now coming is finally doing his job as he looks at 79. 78. I don't like that. I like 19 to leave the two data there, but at least 66. 121. Mal, you require 66. Good bullseye or treble 10. 100. The Game tops, and this is leg. a much Mal better coming. version of Mal coming. In fact, it's absolutely superb. Is it a little too late? Or is he peaking at the right time? Stay Come with on. us for this very exciting end. This conclusion is getting up there with the best. Well, they thought that coming may well be going, 100. but he may well just be staying. And remember, if it is a 2 0 defeat, Barilli is a goner. It'll be goodbye, Barilli. Now, just had a communication coming via Twitter, and we're talking about the Barilli. Barmos, he has an issue that we spoke about this week. He damaged it at work. He took a chunk out of it whilst roofing and 100. has little to no feeling in it. And that is the reason as to why we're seeing some of the throws we have. As we know, normally a quick rhythm player, but there's 85. been an effect to his game in recent weeks. Yeah, it just shows that my analysis was wrong. What I thought he was trying to do is just maybe slow that first down. He did tell me it hurt his uh, a, a sort of cut into his thumb. That has affected his practice and I, 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 the way I was reading things was just how he was working on the, the pace of that first dart. And if they're the reasons for the inconsistencies, then so be it. But I think it's just a sign for me how much I want him there on Saturday night. I want that 109 average Mark Borelli kicking in right now. But if that's the reason... Twenty-three. I used to strategically cut my nails on a certain day before a tournament. The life of a dart player, honestly, and just a, a cut, an abrasion on your hand, your finger is just sixty. It's 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 massive. And when I was talking to Mark last week, he said he did it at work, and I thought it was over and done with. But if that's the reason behind it, that explains that. Well, this is for a fourth consecutive game to be one of a tongue-topping checkout. And this would eliminate Barilli. It would keep coming in the race. If it can game, find shot. tops for a 4 0 victory. And the Bull is very much a live contender to progress through to Saturday night. As for Mark Barilli, his campaign will come to an end following his next game against Scott Walters. It's four out of four when it comes to the doubles for Mal Cumming, a 98 and a half average. And he may have well saved his best performance of the week for one of the most crucial games of the week. And so we enter the final round of fixtures now. We've got a race for second place, folks. But it kicks off with a man at the top, Dom Taylor against Andy Jenkins.
talking about three fixtures left to play here at the Super Series in Group C. Dom Taylor and Andy Jenkins playing the first of them. Doesn't really affect the group, this one. Taylor has already won it. Jenkins can't qualify. Uh, but after that, we're going to see the important ones. Mal coming with that 4-0 win against Mark Brilli. He's given himself a chance. He will need to beat John Desmaro and then hope for a favour from the man who's just beaten 4-0 against Scott Walters in the last one. This one, though, just for fulfilling the fixtures. Andy Jenkins, a late replacement today. Dom Taylor looking to go through the group for the loss of just one match. Let's get it on. It is the calm before the storm here at the Super Series. Taylor knows his fate. Jenkins, well, from the second he walked through the building, knew that he was first only going to be Andy to here for the one day, on. barring anything spectacular. But... After this, we're going to see two games which are going to confirm our lineup for Group C. Mal Cumming has to beat John Desimo and then has to hope that Mark Barilli beats Scott Walters. Yeah, there's plenty of banter in this player's area. I've just sort of walked through there now. And if you could do this for me and beat Mal Cumming, and if you can do this, it comes down to that. So there's plenty of jokes going on there. But, yeah, a very exciting end. Just the way we like it as neutrals. Just to tell you what is happening then in terms of the table. Scott Walters, 10 points plus one on legs difference. Mal Cumming, eight points plus five on legs difference. And Andy Jenkins, jovial as ever. Went up to Chris Murphy or shouted up to Chris Murphy before the game got underway. Could he win the group? 137. Yeah, I've just got that message too. He's been great, hasn't he? He's been a great addition. Like I said, it's uh, it could it could have been one of those days, you know. The results sort of went his way a little bit. 129. Yeah, how to beat Scott Walters and just all about that first game of the day, really. It would have been some story. 57. I guess for Dom Till, he doesn't want to go into 18. tomorrow night on the back of a defeat. But he's been magnificent. So whatever happens here, he's been the, the star man of 41. week two, in my opinion, so far. Dom, you require 70. Can he finish off with a statement to send through to Saturday night? Well, he's already left 72 after 12, looking for another 15 dart par for the course leg. And if he can find double four, he will do exactly that. And he wasn't too far and away. He 39. Double 16, two darts. 23. Dom, you require four. Don't expect Jenkins to come back. Commentator's curse. Go big on your first. Game shot on the and first I promise day. you, it Dom drops Taylor. in. People don't believe me. He probably went just above that double one there. There's good banter on there. He's been, a, Dom to throw first. He's been a great addition, Jenks, hasn't he? It's nice to see him sort of so jovial and usually seen him a lot more serious than this because his game's all about that tenacity, that, you know, that controlled aggression, that internal want. 60. And to see him playing with a smile on his face, he's been, he's been really good today. I mean, look, he could play with that freedom, can't he? Because he would have known what was 85. heading his way. But he was also here but you know to play for the make sure everything was integral to make sure everything was fair for all the players and look you can tell him he, he got four points today he's one two lost two that he's given it a good go it's meant that the groups had a had a, as fair a conclusion as it could have had following what happened yesterday to Sven Verdonk and of course we send our best wishes 16. to him he's going to get some treatment when he returns back home to Belgium over the weekend no, he looks, I know it's a silly thing to say, but he just looks so dejected, doesn't he? Even He's got that sorryful eyes look at you, and as if he's let us down by not finishing it off. But like you said, the long-term damage, if he'd have continued, could have been the, uh, the, the real disaster of the situation. 83. There. And look, we, we live in an era of sport and a day and age of in the world of sport where your mind and your body now are so important and you've got to look after it and utilise it every way. As Dom Taylor utilises the treble 20 bed to the utmost perfection. And you see it with footballers, rest and rotation policies to make sure there's no injuries. And if a player has a slight injury, they get subbed off. And it's no different in darts. If you pick up an injury, don't Dom, sacrifice one 16. game for a long-term future. 
Tops for 2 0. Fifty two. The bar is set so high Andy for Dom. You'll see some facial mannerisms for him, but Treble nineteen. Ninety-three. And don't expect Dom, Dom to miss this eight. double foot. There's like a magnet in this double. Game shot in the second leg. As shown Dom in diagram. Taylor. B. We're like the dick and dom of darters, aren't we? Not quite the Anton deck. Third leg is Andy to throw first. Game on. I know where the Geordie's in this room. 58. Well, there'll be no Saturday night takeaway for them in the near future, but will you be a part of our Saturday night bonanza here at the Super Series? If you scan this QR code, 16. you can join us each and every Saturday night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth down on the South Coast of England. Tickets available for 39. every single week. We're here 50 weeks a year here at the Super Series. And if you scan that QR code or alternatively, head over to dartshop.tv. You can get your tickets for just £2 to be here every single Saturday night here 59. in Portsmouth. Even get to meet Glenn Dummond. Oh, the hordes will be applying now, that's for sure. The dozen massive will be out. 81. Well, that's a couple of tickets sold for tomorrow. A couple will do. <laughs> Bigger than my exhibitions. The funniest exhibition was seven people. 100. And five of them went, who is he? I thought the bingo was on tonight. Working to Cumbria. 44. I was ridiculed in a, in a place in Manchester. It was John Gwynn. And they were saying, John, you told us the world number one was coming tonight. 177. I did a nine data that night. They were putty in my hands. 99. Dom, you're so the race into a 3-0 lead next to no time at all. Another average north of 90. 93.2 on this occasion. Triple 18 means one data, double 16. This is Game ultra impressive third. from Dom, Dom Taylor. Taylor. 105. 3 0 lead, double break, 15 data, you name it, he's doing it. The boy is good. Fourth leg, it's Dom to throw first. Game 18 on. points from 20 in this group. That's super impressive, isn't it? Well, it's nigh perfect. Don't look at your notes. 100. Don't look at your notes. Who beat him? How oh, far you've got to go back? 100. His last defeat, his only defeat was to Mal Cumming. He'd actually, he'd actually make a little bit of Super Series history in, in some respects today. 121. Because he would have beaten six players in the same group. 114. Because he, would, he beat Sven Verdonk yesterday and he's beaten every other player who's currently playing in the group today. Can you think of many people who've got the 20 points in Group C? Josh Richardson did it back yeah. in Southampton. 60. I was thinking here at the Live Lounge. Josh Payne did it before, I'm pretty sure. 59. It doesn't happen a lot nowadays because the groups here at the Super Series are so ultra-competitive. They're well put together. Yeah, you say competitive. It has an air of inevitability at the moment. 100. A lot of smile and a lot of laughter on there. And I just think that's a, a lot of respect to how Dom Taylor's playing. I think even Andy Jenkins is... 55. Just saying this guy's just a little bit too Dom good for us right now. I wonder what Mike Warburton's thinking, what Robert Thornton's thinking. It whets the appetite for tomorrow night. Tops. Oh, <laughs> He went for all three tops. A little 18. bit of showbiz Andy from Dom Paul, Taylor. 47. I was going to say, can it be the maximum response? 97. Dom, you require 40. For an absolute demolition job for the 
ultra impressive Dom Turler. A group C to remember. Double 10. 20. You set it up, Glenn. And do you require. I tell 50? you what, you talk about champagne. Just look at the evilness. This is going for the bull. Game shot Unbelievable. In the Andy Jenkins. That's what we're talking about. Anything you can do. Listen, young man. Tops, tops, tops. Against me. How dare you? Andy to throw first. Game he on. He who laughs last, Dom Taylor. I can't wait till someone gets onto 150 in a minute. 47. Sixty. I was just thinking the respect of Desmarone coming there with just probably just doing their preparation. They're expecting to walk. I don't think anyone expected um, Dom Taylor to be missing double top there. And now it's a case of calming down after the chaos and madness. One hundred and thirty-nine. And it's settling down. It's calming down, and. Dom Taylor settles down the quickest in this leg. 100. What was it? Neil Warnock, the football manager, said, enjoy yourself, but enjoy yourself by being disciplined. Yeah, what a job he did at Huddersfield this year, didn't he? He was uh, absolutely superb. 50. They were down and out. I think he's only managed one team badly. It was Middlesbrough. 139. Has there been any football on this week? Don't know, you'll have to ask Chris. 58, and you require 118. One, one, two. So you really should stay there. 26. One hundred. Back on the nineties now. Jenkins starts on ninety-two. He'll start a treble twenty, and that is plump. Seventy-six. Dom, you require ninety-four for the match. Ninety-four. Just by the tell by his face, it was 54. hard to see with the camera and angle there. Sixteen. Jenkins for three two. Too good of a marker, maybe. Surely just kiss off the one of them barrels. Game shot on the fifth leg. And that's Andy how you Jenkins. do it. You work off one dart onto the next. And onto the final one. And again, the Dom Taylor really should have been Sixth in a player's area with his coat on on the way back on. to his hotel to prepare for Saturday night. He's now in a bit of a battle. Because if he loses this leg, Jenks has the darts and the decider. 100. Good last start there from Taylor. Just a reminder that after this game, it's all about finalising those spots into tomorrow night's final. Mal Cumming needs to beat John Desimo and then hope for a fave for Mark Barilli. If he beats Scott Walters on the back of a coming victory, he'll be the Australian. He'll go through to tomorrow night's final. And then we're going to see the final three spots confirmed. Courtesy 100. of Group B. Later on the scene, Robert Thornton leading the way. We're going to be watching that action tonight from 10 o'clock here on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Are we about to see the conclusion to this one? Because Dom Taylor has left himself 161 after nine. 83. And he's going to get six. Dom, you require 161. Be a fitting end. To a wonderful campaign. A lot of laughter and smiles on there. There'll be none of that tomorrow night. That I can rest assured in. There won't be in the next two games. You just feel this is the hors d'oeuvre for the main course to come. 100. Dom, you require 72. To round off an incredible Group C campaign.
on 18 points. He's been nigh on perfect throughout the course of the last two days. He has pitched his tent as far as Samoa Knight's concerned, but he can't lay up for the double. Jenkins is doing him like a kipper. No way does he go Andrew tops, 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 does he? It's the only way he's going to go. He don't, wind, he don't wind up. Oh, that was automatic looking at the tops there. I think part of that tells me that Jenkins wants this game still. 100. I thought he'd played Don Dom Taylor there 32. for the biggest lesson of his life. It's double 16 for the match. No Game. more jokes Jump. around. It's and Dom match. Taylor's Dom been Taylor. absolutely superb in this Group C campaign. 18 points out for 20. He is the real deal. The tower is shining high. That was an unbelievable performance. And Andy Jenkins has been a great addition to this Group C. And the tail of the turf. Not an awful lot between them. Just shy of 90 for Dom. Job done for him. Now, it's all about second place. And next up, it's John Desmero. And it's a much-needed win for Mal Cumming after this short break. What a real fun game of darts that was before the break between Dom Taylor and Andy Jenkins. But now it is the serious business of deciding who will join Taylor in qualifying for finals night on Saturday. Three horses still in the race from the final two matches. John Desremo, the outsider, he needs to win 4-2 or better to have any chance of qualifying. Malcoming, well, any win would give him an opportunity. And then Scott Walters, he's the one in the box seat on 10 points, takes on Mark Burrilli, already eliminated in the last match. And I tell you what, it's a good job we've got Glenn Durant here this week because Matthew Edgar's rule of three is in the mud, isn't it? Someone's going to go through having lost four matches, maybe even five. And Andy Jenkins is out despite losing only three matches. Back to Glenn and Henry. Thank you, Chris. And rule of thumb is quite simple. Never listen to Matt Edgar. Simple. But the business starts now. Mal coming, you feel, had his First chances. Leg, John he didn't to take them. First. John Desmarais had a bit of a disaster of a day. He's had real opportunities, just didn't seem to deliver. Now, they're playing each other. For me, Mal looks the more accomplished, the more composed. 
But there's just something about Scott Walters I can hear in the players' 100. area. He's bouncing right now. I think he thought he was out at one point today. And he looks, for me, the form horse right now. So still all to play for. Mark Borelli still plays 81. a huge part in this. But he looks down. He looks a little... He's on the back of one of his weaker games. But he can still play a major role. So just sit back 91. for the next 30 minutes. And pick one from three. Yeah, this is going to be a drama-riddled few minutes. And 41. I think both of these plays, even though they know the significance and the weight of the situation, they can almost still play with that kind of flair and freedom because maybe at one point today they thought their chances 92. were over, especially when you saw Scott Walters charging through the field in the vein that he has. Yeah, when you think 10 points can be enough. 59. I think there'll be an awful lot of disappointment when people sort of reevaluate and self-reflect. It's going to be a, a tough one to look at some games. I lost 4-3, and this man in your 100. picture there has lost a few of them. Just a little bit of magic, just a little bit of something at the end, that end product. And 41. I think the thing with John is just... Now you require 110. When, when asked the questions, he just didn't have the answers, and that'll be something that will irritate him. 50. It's been another slow start for Desimo, and it it would be a shame because the way that he really kicked in the middle of the week, it would be nice of his week, but then just as a Mount consequence, Peter out. Perfect dart. Doesn't need to move. Game shot in the first Hence leg. The Mal coming. That went in as delightful as it looked. It's 1-0 to the Aussie. And a break Second of throw. Second leg is Mal to throw first. Game on. He's making his move right now. And only Scott Walters, you feel. Is the man in his 24. way. 24. Just imagine what it would mean for the Modus Super Series if the first two 60. Champions Week players from Series 4 came from America and Australia. It could be the most cosmopolitan Champions Week we've ever had. 100. And they keep on coming. Just cut it, I won't be here now all week 11 and 12. By then, 100. The excitement will be raised to a new level with another Champions Week. I'm back here in July, but I'll be watching avidly. 35. Apart from when Matt Edgar's on. Playing or commentating? Both. Yeah, John Desmond's had the the day from hell when, when you least want it. 25. He's demonstrated his real qualities this week, especially on Wednesday when he played really beautiful at times. Four from five he was and just looked 100. confident. 100. He looks like a beaten man right now. It's a shame to see. But credit to Mal Cumming because he can only do the job that he's been asked to do. But that's a good visit from Desimo. Yeah, Cumming just looks solid all of a sudden. But his frustration will be a couple of 4-3 that he's on the back of. He hasn't won this match 78. yet. 78. Sills you right off someone like John Desmo. He pings in a nice little 140. Fifty-eight. Mal, you require 164. Something special. No, not the one six four. We've had some big finishes, haven't we? The group B and the group C. John, you require one hundred and eighteen. Six one eighties from Reese Robinson was a big highlight last night. You would think Cummins going to get a dart or a double. Mal, you require seventy. Or will it be two? Tops. Game shot in the second leg. Mal coming. And he's just sort of saying, where have you been all week? That's what he's saying to you there. That wry smile. And Top's now going in with Third ease. Third leg is John to throw first. It's been Tazo. He's just going over and above the mark when needed the most. That's the frustration. I think part of him feels like Scott Walters is going to get the job done against Mark Borelli. Maybe the body language from Mark, but Mark being the professional he is, he'll get up there and do his very, very best. 100. John Desmero, now he simply can't lose, lose another leg. 
One hundred. Well, Mal Cumming hasn't lost a leg since losing the last leg against Don Taylor. Forty. In that four-three defeat, he is on a streak now of six in a row. He could be making it seven very shortly. And look, it was a case of Mal Cumming that. He had the better legs difference than Scott Walters going into this one, so he had to win and hope Walters loses. But by winning by a big margin, 100. you are really piling the pressure on Walters. Severely piling the pressure on Walters. 60. Now you require 161. I wonder if John's missing... Sven being in the players' area, maybe they practice together, maybe they had a little routine together, but something just hasn't clicked today for Desmarais. 101. We've already seen come and hit 60, so feel confident he'll get that. 95. Maui requires 60. This is to eliminate Desmarais and to make it a two-horse race. It's going to be Tots. Hasn't missed a dart at double yet. 20. But he has now. And he's just John, opened up the door of opportunity for Desmo. Seventy-three. Mao, you require forty. To put pay to the Belgian. Put the Aussie in the front seat. Game shot in the third leg. Coming is leading coming. three nil with relative ease. John Desborough is no longer at the races. He has struggled Fourth all leg, day today. To throw first. Game on. And it's Mal Cummins who's doing his job to be here on Saturday night. Well, at the minute, he's checking in and checking out of Dartbreak Hotel. 125. 22. It's a lonely place, such a lonely place for John Desimo. 100. And right, somehow coming, he is eking ever closer towards a 4 0 win. Which, in terms of points, have put him on to 10. In terms of leg difference, have put him on to plus 9. Realistically, that doesn't really matter. The, the bottom line is it's, it's down to what Scott Walters does against Mar Barilli. If Walters wins, he's in. If Barilli wins, coming will go through. You've still got to make Scott Walters a big favourite now, and that will frustrate Mal coming, especially after you watch Jeremy Fargus compatriot lose a group here by one leg. Is it going to be the same type of fate for Mal coming so near yet so far? 40. Sixty. He's looked fresh throughout as John. He looks like he's you know, ready for the game there. Just hasn't clicked today for whatever reason. But that's that's darts. Eighty two. He'll know better than anyone why. You're not feeling it some days. You're not feeling it. And these are the days. Sixty. You want to produce your best. Now you require ninety six. Malcolm is ninety six points away from saying uh, Scott Walters, over to you. All about setting it up, which is exactly what he does. And so John Desimo, this may well be his last visit to the board this week, but he's been a fantastic addition to the Boda Super Series. It's been great having the 80. killer bee with us, but Mal Cumming can Mal kill him off now. 40. And mean that Scott Walters will have to beat Mark Barilli. He's Game still shot. in the and race, is Mal coming as he gets the better of John Desimo by four legs to nil. He's done his job, but he now has to sit backstage and see what happens next. An 80.16 average, four out of eight on the doubles. And now he will sit and await his outcome because Mark Barilli takes on Scott Walters after the break. A win for Walters, and he will go through to tomorrow night's final. If Barilli is the victor, it'll be Mal who will be returning for the Saturday night finale.
final fixture then of Group C, and it is perfectly poised. Scott Walters knows exactly what he needs to do. It's a case of win, and you are in for Walters after Mal Cummin did his job against John Desrimo. 4 0 success for him before the break. He's currently sitting in second place, but he is a kind of sitting duck in that position, hoping for a favour from Mark Burley. Of course, Burley won this fixture yesterday, averaged 109 in it in the very first match of the group. But right now, Mal, well, he doesn't know whether he's coming or going. And for Walters, it's a win. And he goes through alongside Dom Taylor. And to talk you through it, it's Glenn Durant and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. And so it all comes down to this. The fate of Mal Cumming rests in the shoulders of Mark Perilli. As for Scott Walters, it is the simplest of simplest scenarios. It is knockout darts as far as he is concerned. A victory and he goes through to the finals tomorrow night. A defeat okay, and he's eliminated from first. contention. It Game is on. that simple. It is that black and white as we enter the final game of the session and thus the final game of the group. 100. Yeah, Mal Cumming is in the players' area, but the only parallel I can give is the Grand Slam when I'd done my job. And then I was reliant 81. on Gerwin Price beating Simon Whitlock, and I simply couldn't watch the game. I mean, albeit a lot of money was playing for there, but I'm sure Mal is probably, probably walking around outside right now because it's tough when it's in the hands of other people. and. What will be very difficult to watch is the fact that Scott just seems to be getting better and better. 104. One saving grace is the fact that when Mark Borelli played Scott Walters yesterday, he smashed in just shy of 110 average. It was by far the game of the week, the performance 82. of the week from Mark Borelli by a long way. And Mark is one of those beautifully uh, similar to Scott Walters, what we call a flair player. If he brings his A game, he can beat Scott Walters. No problem. He can 100. beat any player in this tournament. But if I was asked to put my money on someone right now, I've got to go with Walters. 45. What's that responsibility like, knowing that you're not just playing for yourself, but you're playing for somebody else? It, it's good. It's, I mean, it'd be relaxing the fact he knows he can't qualify. But he'll also be Mark thinking he can still make a big difference in this group. And, you know, integrity professionalism, the w words we use an awful lot here at the Motor Super Series. He, he'll be giving everything. 60. Scott, you require 40. But I just see something at the eyes of this man right now. Game shot in the first 13 leg. Data. Scott Walters. Quality. Stall set out. Yeah. It's, uh, Second he, he's leg looking Scott good. But first. like I said, Mal Cullen can't really look at this game for me. He's had opportunities elsewhere. They all have. There's been moments when I thought Desmaro was going to qualify. There's been moments where I thought if Borelli kicks in now, he's going to become a firm favourite. And and from from the back of the pack, Walters has come flying through, and Walters was the favourite to win this group. 52. A top-notch player, but absolutely nowhere near Dom Taylor, who has been a dream this week. Well, we definitely know he's going to be there tomorrow night from this group. We're still trying to find out who the other 45. man is going to be. At the minute, it looks very much like Scott Walters, because... He's come out fully charged in this one. As for Mark Barilli, it's the end of a... 36. Well, it's been a long week for him, and maybe just now the adrenaline has just eaten out of his body. Can't quite get up to those adrenaline levels. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the adrenaline. Mark looks a super fit man. He's tall, but sometimes when you do reach the 49s, 50-year-old... You know, your bones, then your body does tell you that five days on the spin plane dance. 95. And that incredible disappointment where he's had chances today. And all that means you've got to put the, the favour with Scott, who has definitely got a bounce in his step. 104. That's what Borelli can do. And that's what Malcolm and will be hoping will be more consistent throughout this game. The perfect first dart, I thought. One when he just hits the bottom wire and a treble 20, just expect the maximum. It's on for back-to-back -back five visit legs Scott, as well, Scott 81. Walters, in a crucial game. The biggest game of his week, he is mustering up some of the best darts we've seen this week. And all he's doing there is just checking Mark Borelli's score, so he doesn't need to bring the bull into the equation. And very sensibly just laying up, 49. because it's nice to bang in a big average. But the most important thing in this situation now is just the two points. No histrionics. Just do a professional job. 
So double 16, four 16 and a 2 0 lead and they put them halfway Scott towards the victory 32. post. The qualification post. Uh, I don't know what, quite what happened there. Something in his eye in game one. So whether that's still bothering him, but it's double eight. Game shot in the second Whatever leg. it was, Scott it feels Walters. good. And you don't often see the massive fist pumped when someone goes 2-0 up there, but you can just sense everything. And what I'm looking at there is the speedy walk Third to that water Mark table. First, game on. He's bouncing. He just wants to get this done. He doesn't want any history on it. He doesn't want any drama. He just wants to get in, get out, get the job done with no dramas whatsoever. 85. 30 darts for those first two legs. And he's kicking on. One Second max. And could that be the straw that breaks the Barilli back and thus kicks out coming from 95. contention? Just when I think Dozzer's tips was doing well, I needed Barelli to get three legs here for the first one up. 140. I'll go and pair shape for Dozzer. So we've got a couple more goes. We really may not get many more goes at the ball because 85. Scott Walters is firing up like a steam train. Borelli's actually playing okay here. He's just coming up against the steamroll that is Scott Walters. 48. What's this tunnel vision like that Scott Walters is going through at the minute? It's a nice feeling. I think he knows he's, he's in a good space right now. He's probably, I think he's enjoying the 92. battle. 92. I don't Scott see a lot of panic that he's trying to get over. Sometimes you can dip for the winning line too early. I think he's enjoying the battle. He was never in this competition. And all of a sudden, he's just come out the pack like an 800-meter runner on that final bend. When he may find himself towards the, the bell, the final lap. If he could take out the 76. Scott, you require 76. Big moments. He's given himself a chance for one dart a double. Or has he? 42 left, and that's criminal. And that's the realisation there. You think, and has double 14 left? Because you're 44. in panic mode. Has double, 40, has double 7 left a double? Will Borelli punish? Yes, he game will. It's leg. game on. Mark Barilli. And I think I heard the big Aussie shout there. He's watching backstage, praying for a Barelli win. Think it's Scott to throw first. Will game that on. seven, that double seven, affect Scott Walters? It doesn't seem for me to have the personality to panic. Still seems very focused. 125. And this is where your practice drills, your preparation all come for moments. Very difficult to practice for moments like this. 100. But in these big moments, small details can make a major difference. And we will jot that down. That double seven when he wanted the 16. But will we be jotting down another Walters maximum? It's a 125 followed by a 140. 236 after six. The average ticks above a ton. 102 the average in a game he has to win to secure his progression through to tomorrow night's final. Scott Walters is finding some gears when he needed to most. Absolutely awesome darts. Awesome darts for an 11 darter. 90. Scott, you require 56. When the pressure's on. This is the type of atmosphere for a Saturday night. A real cutthroat Either win, I'm in, out, goodbye. 40. They weren't the best three darts he's ever thought. He's got to just go back and go through his process again. Instead of banging his head like he is now. Let's find that moment. Relax. Mark's going to put some pressure on. 99. It's not a huge Scott amount. requires 16. Tetchy. Game shot in the fourth it's leg. Up Scott to the Walters. challenge. 3-1 Walters. And now is a leg away. 
from tomorrow night's final here at the Live Did Lounge in Portsmouth. The man who came so close to Series 2 glory. He made it to the semi-finals and Champions Night. He was just beaten, just bettered by Matt Clark on that particular 100. occasion. This is a man who knows this format and the true intricacies 100. of it inside and out. This has been a competition where he's had a lot of good memories. But it's one where he still has that scratching itch. 82. Which is to win a week in this Super Series format. He qualified for that Champions League by being runner-up in week one of Series 2. He was defeated 99. in that particular final by Jim McEwen. The goals and objectives for Scott Walters is very clear. And it feels very clear now. That the finishing post for him in terms of qualification is in touching distance. Averaging 100.2, which is as consistent an average in the sport as you can have. Wow, that effectively equates to 15 darts a leg. And he's left himself on 167, and he's going to get six darts on that particular mark to guarantee his place into 20. tomorrow night's finale. Scott, you require 167. Will now set up. 60. But can only leave 107. A max here from Barilli would make things very interesting. It's not going to happen. He can still leave himself on a finish. If he can find a way through that. If he finds a way between the posts, 60. he can't. Scott, you require Scott Walters looks up to the heavens. He now stares the board down. Needing 107 points for his place in tomorrow night's final. He started the day chasing. But he's been nigh on perfect and made a surge to the line. But he hasn't 93. crossed it yet. There is still work to do for Walters. It is not job done just yet. But really piles in a ton. Scott piles in some pressure. 14. But now, Scott Walters, this is your moment. On double seven. Game. Darting Set. heaven. And the match. Scott, Scott Walters, Walters is into tomorrow night's final. He was pushed all the way by Mal Cumming, but he betters Barilli to make it through to the showpiece occasion. And you could see what it meant to him. A 4-1 victory, a 97 average in a game that meant the most. An emotional Scott Walters claims his place into Saturday night's finale here at the Super Series. He is going to join Dom Taylor in the occasion tomorrow night from Group C. Commiserations go to Mal Cumming, who ran him so close to the line. But it is Walters who is through. We're going to hand up to the balcony and get some analysis now from Glenn Durrant, who is alongside Chris Murphy. Thank you, Henry. Yes, well, Scott Walters, he did it in the end. It started with the meeting against Mark Brilli. That's where it started to go wrong, but he's made up for it with that performance there. Yeah, it's a different style of way of getting through for Scott Walters. He's usually dominating groups. You know, for him to come from out the pack could be interesting. He's got that type of game where he could be very, very dangerous on tomorrow night. Yeah, it wasn't him dominating this group, was it? Let's have a look at the table. It was actually Dom Taylor. There you see it as a seven-player group because Sven Verdonk played half the games yesterday. Andy Jenkins came in to replace him after injury today. But had a bit of an impact as well, didn't he? A couple of wins and a really fun game with Taylor at the end of the day. Yeah, not my cup of tea, fun games. And boring, boring does it was coming out of me there. But yeah, it was nice to see the Andy Jenkins come in and let's hope Sven Verdon gets himself better and we see him back here at his very, very best. But Dom Taylor, wow, what a player. One thing about being in the comms box, you see players up close and personal that you probably don't see all the time. He is very, very good. And Barilli, Desmero and coming back as all had a run for the money, didn't they? Well, coming was downstairs. I said, I'm surprised you're watching it. And I used that analogy when uh, Price played Whitlock. And he said, I didn't think I'd be in this position. Well, I disagree. He had real opportunities and 
Desmond just wasn't at the races today. I think the people who didn't qualify this week uh, from this group will be fairly disappointed because they all had chances. Well, we now have three players through to finals night. Mike Warburton got through from Group A, and you can see now there Scott Taylor, uh, Dom Taylor rather, and Scott Wallop just merging them together there through from this group. Three great names and three very, very talented players. Absolutely tremendous. And... You know, if anyone wasn't watching Group B last night, it was absolutely fantastic. Six 180s in one game from Reese Robinson, 100 finishes, 170 finishes. You know, the three that go through there make it one of the best Saturday nights I've been involved in. Oh, I'm coming to that. Don't worry. We have got Group B in action this evening, 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. We'll have a look at the table. Robert Thornton looking like he's as good as through, one win away, in fact. But the rest of them, Glenn. Well, it's your, your chance here. Pick two to join Yeah, you. I, I mean, I'd, I'd delight to see Robert Thornton here, just thinking one win under the belt there. Um, I, I'd like to see Chaz Barstow come through the pack. I think he would be a great addition to the final. And I think Jeremy Fagg has been superb, super consistent, and they'd be the three for me. So that is tonight from 10. Do make sure that you join us. But uh, as far as Group C is concerned, well, it was dominated by Taylor Walters, found a way. But coming, he's going home. See you at 10. Here we go then, it is final time and we can't wait. Seven legs potentially and Matt Clark will have the darts because he won the bullseye in the practice room. Is Matt going to go back to Lancashire with £20,000 or is Raymond Smith going to be on a flight in a few hours time from Heathrow Airport going back to Australia with a lot of Aussie dollars? In fact, I just had a little bit of a communication from Chris Murphy, our commentary colleague, because he seems to think that Superman could be paid in crypto. <laughs> nice joke there from Murph, but I think he wants the cash. You could have sent me that one, Murph. I've run out of jokes now. No Absolutely joke is final, no jokes though. with these two players, but uh, it's Matt Clark who continues to impress. He's won the bull. But as Paul alluded to on the balcony there, I thought he made a very vital point. If anyone can handle the pace of Matt Clark, then it's the mental strength of Raymond Smith. And that's something that resonate, resonated with me when you said that, Paul, because I think the last game there with Scott Walters, he was beaten when all of a sudden Matt really slowed down in getting his darts out. And okay, he was affected first leg is Matt to throw first. Lesson learned. Game on. Final game. Who will win? £20,000. My life changed in hope. The World Masters, when I won twenty five grand. The winner of this league won the five grand. The winner tonight gets twenty grand. The biggest prize in amateur sport. Over $1.17 million in prize money. The Motor Super Series will be paying out every year. And it all boils down to Series 2. These two players, who can emulate... What the fantastic corner Whitehead did. And just watching that play back early just brought a little bit of goosebumps and how much it meant for Conan. And it'll certainly mean an awful lot for one of these guys. One thing I've noticed about this audience tonight is just how attentively they've paid attention to all of the matches tonight. There's been no wins, chanting, no singing, no boisterousness like the week before Christmas when Adam Warner won. But we've got two players here who are not local to Portsmouth, and maybe everybody's on the fence. All they want to see no, is won. somebody creating a bit of history for themselves. Yeah, proper daft fans are, and I, I think it's because one of the locals hasn't brought 20 or 30 people with them. 
I think the most was Scott Walters who brought seven or eight. So it's just been a crowd over here to enjoy the darts and uh, we'll be enjoying a match like that from Matt. Sneaky good on the maximums this week has been Matt Clark, whereas Raymond has been so close and yet so far to being the man at times this week. He did have a chance no, to win Group A against Justin Smith. He didn't win that match and had to play in Group B. And then he faltered on day two. He has not won a group all week, but neither has Matt Clark. He was second in Group C. And if you put those two things together, Fair, it means eight. that these two are playing each other for the very first time in the Motor Super Series. And it's for £10,000. I always get the fame for Raymond Smith. He's got the mantras, I never dreamed of success, I work for it. He's just a big thinker Fair, who's worked eight. hard on his game, worked Matt, on the quiet, psychology of the game. I've heard him chatting with players this week in the, in the players' area. He has a lot to say, he has a lot of thoughts about the game, whether you like it or not. I think one person I want to listen to is this guy. He talked about Alexander Merckx being in a game zone. On the first Matt Clark just continues Matt Clark. to do what Matt Clark does. And every time I've doubted him this week, and I will shake his hand and apologise if he wins this, because so like Raymond's maybe the first. focus, Paul, has been a, a little bit about the pace and how it has an effect on others. He's played some really good darts at times as well. Even myself on the balcony, I was 100. picking up Raymond Smith because I had him as a firm favourite. But sometimes when we let someone go under the radar, they're okay with that. And I think Matt Clark has been okay with that his whole career. Because at no, no time in his darting life has he been on anybody's radar in bold. Even when he made the England squad, the attention was about Painter, Beaton, Fordham, King. When he was in World Championships, One it was always hundred. about other people like Richie Burnett and Martin Adams. He made the quarterfinals of the World Championship on his debut season and didn't do any better in the next World Championships or anything after that. Hey, it's been a very interesting story, which for me has got a few dots after it because it's very far from finished. Ray Smith, he goes home as the runner-up. Does he go home happy? No, not at all. Hey, He's someone who gets on the Thank podium you. Best of order, in please. F1 and isn't happy unless it's at the top. He's an all-or-nothing kind of guy. He will take things on the chin. He will take the second spot if that's all he can muster. Doesn't mean he's got to be happy about it. Ten grand to the runner-up, twenty grand to the winner, but also just the respect of being the. Motor Super Series, Series 2 champion. An amateur darts right now. 100. And we start again on Monday. I've seen the names. I don't know if they've been announced yet, the names for, for next week, but some excellent players there. So all starts again Monday morning, 9.30. Sporty Stuff TV on the YouTube channel of Modus. If you do want to know the names, because I don't want to be the person to give them out, I'd like 43. you to go to our Ray Twitter page at MSS Darts. Check it out. It will be released within the next 12 hours. Raymond Smith is going for a 116, and he's got at least two of these this week. He's been mastering these shots, but he's not going to get a shot at double 18 this time. 60. Three well thrown darts. Matt, you require 143. 60, but on a positive, it leaves a two dart combination. 143. Exhale equals confidence. Travel 20, travel 17, double 16 is the route he's attempting. Part one, tick. Part two, no tick. That leaves 66. Right. So we're getting close to about 30 seconds of Raymond Smith. To hey, think seven. About this Raymond, 56. you require 56. He's okay with it. I was looking at him the whole time when Matt was going for that 143. He didn't show any signs of impatience. 
Double top. Big Got dart. A... Absolutely. Game show. And he's the, the big man leg. for Raymond the occasion. Smith. One all. We're down to best of five to see who takes the title. So look, it's Matt to throw first. Game on. Raymond Smith must break Superman in this match. It's kind of a big ask when you think about it. He has to be the general sword of this game. He's got to be the bad guy to take out the good guy. If indeed you are a reader of comic books and other paraphernalia in fantasy universes. 57. He's got something about him, Raymond Smith, that could work in a comic. That big bald head there. Steely eyes. Or maybe if Matt Clark takes his glasses 100. off, he'll actually look like Superman. I think we just need a bit of order there because one thing about a fantastic crowd, we have been in here in a few hours now, it's the one voice syndrome, Paul. I used to hate it. I could have, didn't mind 20th, 20 or 30 or 40 feet, 50 people shouting at the same time. Or even in some of the bigger crowds, it's just like a big swarm of bees behind you. When you can hear one, two, it's an absolute nightmare. I'm not getting anything from either player as to 140. state discomfort or impatience. I'm loving the bubble that they're both in. Mac Clark slow, Mac Clark this, Mac Clark that. Mac Clark currently 103.5 average. 100. That's all that matters. Matt, you're recording 136. That high all week in a completed match. In fact, the only person not to have averaged over 100 all week from our finalists was Jim McEwen. Because we saw Adam Mould with a ton plus average earlier on tonight. The biggest average of the night was shared by Raymond and Adam because they have both had 101.9. Got to get another. He's got to get another 100. in a sense that 76 is not right, a gimme. 76. 76 is a finish that Dar players like. And very simply, I'd say to people, 20 is a must, treble 20 is a bonus. So look at the 16s. Just like this double top. He will once again take his time and do things his own way. Raymond Smith is just behind. Game the and the third last leg. thing that Raymond Smith Matt wants to Clark. hear is game. And that's exactly what he did here. So it's back to the drawing board for Smith. Focus well, on Raymond winning your first. leg of darts. And start off with a minimum one treble visit. Every time he blocks it by hitting that small 20, for me, he may be better off 60. going to the 19s, but it's easy for me to say that from the commentary box, but I just get the feeling that there is another level for Raymond to find if he can use the board a little bit more in the way of flexibility. 19s, 18s. Four, he uses the four. 17s a lot. But that's predominantly with one dart left when that 60 bed is covered. Because that's as you can bar. see, those darts are very, very upright. And that was a much more inviting guide to get a 140. 140. Case in point. I always think sometimes when you're in a situation like this where tension, anxiety in your body has to be taken into consideration, that when you're aiming for targets, you have the tendency of going low. It's just your body just telling you something. And in this situation, I've seen myself whether it's on a TV stage, just going big, just going just above that treble, and you're thinking, wow, that's gone in like that. I didn't expect it to go there. What lovely angle that is to show you how his darts behave in the final third of the arc. 140. When they're going through the air, slowing down as they go to the board, that flight dragging it through the air. And 161 after 9 is a very nice situation when your opponent is a good 237 behind. It's going all the way this, Paul, isn't it? 134. So. And the best Raymond finals 161. always do. A bit like seven days ago in week 12 of qualifying when John Henderson took out a ton-plus finish against 
Nail Cullen, but a 1 6 1. He's going to be aggressive, obviously, and when he gets his shots, it doesn't matter where his opponent is, he's going to go for them. Very Martin Adams. Be interesting with a, at least a 140 here. 100. I don't think that'll make Raymond Smith worry too much on this 25. He'll keep it simple. All about that big number. Don't ever underestimate hitting that big number. Game show on the four player. Makes that second Raymond dart. Smith. It's now a best of five, Paul. What we have is like a situation first. which goes Game back on. 50, 60 years in this sport. If you're watching on Sporty Stuff TV, you might have been watching darts for the best part of half a century. 100 Loving shots like that. But if you cast your mind back to the 1970s and the 1960s, you might remember a tournament called the News of the World. And every single game in that tournament was first to two legs. 43. And that's exactly what we've got. First to two legs from here for £10,000. And when we talk about pressure, this is pressure, yes it is, but because they've played all week long, 100. they are ready for this pressure. They will never be more ready. It's just a question of who is more ready than the other. And right now, it's Matt Clark taking the full ascendancy in this game. Raymond Smith just showing that sign of distress, which we didn't expect. 125. Last two darts will feel like gold dust once again. It just gives him an outside chance. But for Matt Clark, one treble visit here, and he has a huge advantage. Now, Matt Clark, it's in your hands. It's yours to lose now. One He looks impervious on his own throw. Old school darts from Matt Clark. He's basically telling himself... You can do what you want on your throw, but you're not having mine. Nine darts thrown and 81 60. left. Matt, if he takes it 81. out in 11 or 12 darts here, he's telling Raymond Smith, you're not having my throw unless you hit a nine darter. Double 12 to be within one leg of the crown. Game That's an 11 darter at this time of the Matt tournament. Clark. That's world class wherever you are watching from. Incredible from Superman, and Smith now needs a brace so of legs. Otherwise, first. it's not meant to be Able. for the guru. And as Paul alluded to there, I couldn't have put it any better. With his dart right now, Matt Clark looks unbeatable. And what you're doing, that it's a bit like a penalty shoot out in football. You're making the other team, you're going 1-0 up, 2-1 up. You're making 45. your opponent make mistakes. You're making your opponent score 45. Matt Clark's on a free roll, he will feel, on this leg. It's not the end of the world if I lose it because I have the darts in the final decider. You hear 45 and you think, come on, exactly the same. Give me a couple of trebles. 42. He doesn't take advantage. He lost the first game of the night. Four legs to three. He might win the last game of the entire thing. 103 games have been completed so far this week. Incredible when you think about 54. it. 54. We started in late October. It's early February. This is the culmination of that time frame. These guys won't be thinking about that because right now they are so much in the zone. It's all about 100. just playing in this little concentrated Portsmouth bubble to put their name on the end of our lips forever. Here at the Motor Super Series. He was going backwards in this leg was Raymond Smith. Whoa! With that 180, 180 there. Just when Matt Clark was thinking. As Raymond Smith hit the wall. That 180 is a massive moment. And I tell you what is also interesting. Matt Clark hope, has won each of his legs. 54. With ease. When it's three each, I am telling you, that last leg will have everything. It won't be as comfortable because the treble 20 will shrink. You start thinking, you see the finishing line, you're battling with yourself mentally. And Raymond Smith's thinking, how can I start this leg 60-45 and then go 180-140? That's mental strength right there. It's the ability to just 
stand at the back and breathe and start the process and find more fruit. Even with that 134, Matt Clark Ranger cannot McCormack, leave a finish. 82. So it's 82 to take us the distance. So it's bullseye first dart. And what a dart that is. That's a good feeling for two darts at double 16. He likes double eight. 66. No panic just yet. And what he'll do there is he'll just get himself in order. Sometimes it might be a bit of what he decides not to. For Matt Clark, he will take 30 seconds for these three darts. Just remember a little bit earlier that Raymond did miss a few key doubles Nine, in his second seven. game. Raymond He'll be hoping that doesn't 16. happen again. It Game doesn't happen again. Sick and Clark Raymond Smith. will take us to leg seven. Every leg in this contest has gone with throw. Seven that does not guarantee that this Matt one will. First. But the way Game that Clark on. has performed in this final, when he's thrown first, has been nothing short of miraculous. Twelve weeks of darts. Twelve winners. Six 41. down to the finals night. Down to four for the semi-final, and now down to the last leg. If that doesn't sum up the whole thing about Moda Super Series, nothing does. It's a marathon, this thing. This is game 1,352 in this series, and it will be the very last leg of it. What did I say about Matt Clark? I opened up 140, 180. He's regular on his throw. All of a sudden... One treble will feel like gold. 60. And all of a sudden you're creeping into treble seven. It takes someone like Raymond Smith now to hit a 140 here. And he might just do it. You can hear a pin drop in here. Everybody can hear the dart hitting the board. That 140 is one of the best he's hit this week. Maybe... The very best of the lot. I'm just trying to put you into the mind of the players. Matt Clark's now thinking, shake them off. What are you panicking for? You're winning your darts. 100. Herman Smith now taking the dart. It's now a 3 or one game. Nico, what is going on? He's going to switch. Oh, he's not. I was convinced he was going to go to the 17s. Because previously in the week... That's what he's been doing. It's a great standard of a final. There you can see three 180s in this final. And the averages are very, very 45. healthy. But Matt Clark falters. Raymond, you require 161. And Raymond Smith has got six from here to write his name into Moda Super Series history. Finally, I've called something right. I just had the feeling Matt Clark wouldn't have it all his own way after dominating his darts. 65. And that leaves a two dark combination. Matt Clark on 255. There's the breath. He'll feel like it's all the way, but you've got one chance, Matt. The biggest 180 of your life right now. And all of a sudden, now he's after going downstairs. Now it's the connotations. If he stays there, he leaves a bogey. 100 that, was dangerous. Dangerous. that was a gamble. Is the gamble going to pay off, though? Because Raymond Smith has the first shot for the title. He's going to stay straight and go for double eight and go win it. Shot Raymond back. Smith is the man. The, the super thinks his way champion. to the end and he Raymond gets it done. 20,000 pounds belongs to him. The gamble of coming across the planet has paid off and he will be on a flight back to Australia in a few hours time. And he doesn't even want to keep his own darts. He's given them to a fan in the front row, but now he can afford a new set. The biggest paycheck possible from the Motor Super Series belongs to the guru, Raymond Smith. Wonderful performance, averaged well, the confetti is everywhere, and unfortunately for Superman, he found his kryptonite in Raymond Smith.
Butler one, gets Matt to throw first. A bit of a Game look on. to his numbers and his data and things. I was like, the averages don't quite match the results that he's getting. I mean, some of the results that he's had recently, he's beat people like Scott Williams, Mike Warburton, Jim McEwen. And you're thinking, but the average is running so low. And then when he mentioned there that... 120. He started bad and then he played better at the end of the year. You look a little bit deeper and it goes in line with what you said on the balcony of this uh, recent upward surge in his levels of performance. 85. And I like what he said in the... I like one thing he said in the interview and I hate something else he said in it. So he said being here is going to be a good learning experience. So he's looking to take something away from this, whether it's qualifying through for Saturday, whether it's £5,000 on Saturday night, or whether it's some experience, he's going to develop off the back of this with that sort of growth attitude. The bit I didn't like about it is when 43. he said that the form he showed recently has made him lucky enough to be here. You're not lucky to be here. He wasn't walking past and they went, we need a player. Cool. In you Can come. you play darts, mate? <laughs> and lucky is a word I hate. Same. Hate it. And I used to get all the time when I was coaching football, like someone would shoot and miss and go, oh, unlucky. No, it's not unlucky. No. Unlucky 41. is a bolt of lightning coming down, striking the tree, the tree falling over the goal and stopping the ball from crossing the line. That's unlucky. What it was, was you missed. It was bad technique or poor practice. Something we can work on to make sure you don't miss in future. Luck is not a part of it. And the reason Cam Trab Crabtree, easy to say, is... Here, 60. Cam, you isn't require because he 80. got lucky, it's because his form recently has been that good. He's beat the likes of Scott Williams, who has dominated Game the challenge. the first tour. leg. Cam Crabtree. Oh, what a debut leg that is. A 14 dart break of throw. Matt Jackson starting with two trouble 20s. Then getting Second an, leg, it's Cam to throw first. Pants out. Oof, could be steady in here. No, Game that's on. unlucky. We've, we've hit the wire. It's come yeah. out the board. That's unlucky. If he would have gone and missed and yeah. got a little bit 20, that's not unlucky. No. That's, a, that's a miss. Well, 134. Young Cam Crabtree. <laughs> I'm just going to call him Cam from now on. 100. Um, what do you think of the technique? Slightly overbalance the shoulder just coming a bit too far down so that's going to put a little bit of tension on the knee despite that it's pretty much there it is isn't it i like it 96 and you don't get nine daughters by accident well, the stance is nice and wide let's say there's a little bit of it's 140 the head stays still the, there's not too much shock into the shoulder full extension and very flat 98. in the board. 98. Cam, you require 47. Sometimes cause a few issues. Not so here. This is for an 11. Game shot wow. on the second leg. Cam Crabtree. Wow, wow, wow. Well, if you didn't know he is, you do now. 25 darts doing the opening two legs. Third leg, it's Matt to throw first. Which equates to family and friends of Cam. Quickly get your 57. screenshots ready. Yeah, get your cameras out. Welcome to the Super Series. 140. It's going up. And I tell you what, you're Matt 99. Jackson. 99. What are you thinking? You've been here all week. You've played some good darts in spells. You start off against a 19-year-old debutant, and he starts throwing 122 100. average against you. Yeah, you know you're playing well when you hit a turn and your average starts to come down. I always say that's a great indication of 50. the level of play. Sixty. Ninety-seven. It's interesting that he picked out Robert Thornton as well as part of the players 140. this week. I mean, he was playing darts before Cam was even born. 40. So was I. Cam, you require 61. Are. A pants older than Cam. 
Too good. Game shot on the third Not only is the scoring absolutely exquisite, so is the finishing. Three out of three. Three nil up in the blink of an eye. A double break of throw. First. Winning legs of Game on. 14, 11 and 15. He's averaging 112.72. And there are no signs of stopping. No, I mean... We've all done it. Where you you you've, you're aware when you're in a game like this, you're winning comfortably, and you're three 0 up, and you're thinking one hundred and twenty three. Averaging over and and you start thinking about it. it's not even in it's not even in his in his mind. One hundred. All he's thinking about is winning a game at arts. That's that's what happens when you're not damaged goods. There's no scars. There's he's carrying no 60. baggage. One hundred and forty. This is relentless. One forty, ton one forty. Could be a four nil start. One hundred and thirty five. Can you require one hundred and record I believe is hundred and eighteen. And the whole existence of this format. Game, shots, and the match. Oh, Cam Crabtree. Absolutely incredible. What an opening.